The following podcast is for 18 and up audiences only. The age-old question. If you fucked a clone of yourself, would it be incest or masturbation? Well, we are here today to definitively answer that question. With me are my fellow panelists, Sid the Cat Boy, and Hiran the Pangolin. Gentlemen, your thoughts. It's incest. <laughs> I, <laughs> There's no question here. I feel like Wolf would fuck a clone of himself. <sighs> Been ten seconds, and we've already brought up Wolf. <laughs> he couldn't. Okay. <laughs> if Wolf were fucking a clone of himself, it would be so that he can prove that he's like the better him than the clone, right? Like he has to prove that he's it's the like best. It's like two like walls crashing into each other. Inside and you, there are two wolves. There's, both are gay. Both are gay. They're clones. I mean, like, <laughs> I undergo the theory that um. Like Lexington, if he had a clone, he does have a clone, Shh. or he will. Spoiler. <laughs> um, if he had a clone, his clone would be gay and want to fuck himself. Maybe. I mean, I'm just saying. But if Wolf had a like clone of himself, they would like just wrestle for dominance, and then whoever would lose would obviously, you know. Obviously. Obviously. You have to dip yourself up. But as to whether um. Fucking your clone is incest or masturbation. Um, personally, I wouldn't want to fuck a clone of myself. Like, I'm not attracted well, to myself. Well, because you're not attracted to yourself. That's not, I'm not my own type, but I acknowledge I'm other people's type. What if it's just like giving yourself a hand job, like just to, just to help yourself out a little See, bit? See, it's, it's like, it's like, I wouldn't <laughs> really feel like it would be, I feel like it would be, but like, I wouldn't. I don't know if it'd be on that level of taboo as, like, actually, like, fucking a member of your family. I really do think it would be masturbation to a degree. Mm -hmm. um, there was a friend of ours who said it would just be narcissism. That, I think that, that would was, be part of it. That was you know? Gokai who suggested that. Because if you want to fuck yourself, it's because, like, you want to fuck yourself. It's like, there's that element. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, this makes me ponder. Thank you for the inquisitive <laughs> question. Uh, why are we discussing? Why are we this? talking about clones and and fucking? I them? guess we'll have to find out about halfway through this episode. <laughs> yeah. And until then, it'll be a big mystery. It'll be a mystery. It's, who yeah, is she? Who is she? <laughs> Welcome to the Loincloth Hour, a podcast with three cool pals mm -hmm. who talk about cartoons and the dayness therein. I am Manicorn. I'm here on. Sup, bitches? I'm Sid. And today we're discussing the Gargoyles episode, Double Jeopardy. Double Jeopardy. That's double Jeopardy. quite a title. You get double the points if you answer correctly. Alistair Beck is there. He's watching you. That's great. He's watching you fuck your clone. He's... That's great. Uh -huh. Whatever makes him happy, man. You know what the um, original title for this episode was that the writer proposed what the Greg squash it was a it was originally written under the title Thalog rules <laughs> <laughs> and Greg was like absolutely not Thalog rules this is like like rock rules all right yeah I I like double jeopardy well, no better. rock and rule is what I'm rock and rule ah uh, yes okay mock so I think the title of double jeopardy is actually very bad, but it is better than Thalog Rules, at least. Now I feel a little bit better about the title. Yeah, of Greg didn't like Double Jeopardy either, <laughs> but he said he wanted a he wanted a one word title because he always wants one word titles. It should have just been Thalog. No, no, that's too <laughs> on the nose and direct. Um, enter Thalog. Enter Thalog. <laughs> that could be good too. Oh my god. Oh, wait, we already had Enter Macbeth. That's, that's... That was the reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did enter that already. Thalog. I forgot. I mean, I'm sure many people would love to enter Thalog. Uh huh. In, in many Me. ways. <laughs> I think Thalog is hotter than Goliath. I'm just gonna put that out there. Because you, we've discussed this before, <laughs> you're attracted to. To evil men, to bastards, to assholes, to jerks. Yeah. And Thalog is Goliath, but evil. He looks 
like a demon vampire and I am so into that. Like, I don't yes. know what it is, but like men being like evil makes me want to fuck them. They're hotter. I feel like if the character's too innocent, I don't want to dirty them, you know? If the character's already corrupt, what am I what have I got to lose? Well there is the the pleasure of corrupting the innocent. But we you know, we yeah. all have our different Does that I think that's one of Thalog's kinks. Well yeah, but it, i could see that. Um but He wants to make everyone as dirty as he is. Exactly. Exactly. Um but I mean we could waste more time talking about who's hotter <laughs> or I could just get us started. Um so we start out Brooklyn gives us the previously on Gargoyles announcement this time around. Uh, we open with... This is really funny because he's barely in the episode. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is just a common trend that... He's, he's doing other things behind the scenes, and I will get into what he is doing Oh, I know later. what he's doing! About... <laughs> oh, wait, are we talking about him or are we talking about him? I'm talking both. Oh, okay. I'm talking, he's fucking Goliath, and then he's fucking Hudson afterwards. That's what he's doing when he's not around. He's fucking one of the two it's older like, men. There are a lot of people that portray Brooklyn as just, like, the clan's gimp. This episode he is. Yeah. He is the gimp. It's canon. Uh, Brooklyn fans are eating good tonight. They're always eating well. Oh, Those not with me. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I barely give Brooklyn enough attention. Like, they tune into this podcast and just hear us talking shit about Brooklyn, like, every episode. And they're like, what is, like, what kind of Gargoyle fan doesn't fucking love Brooklyn the most? And, and we're we like, us. We don't. We. <laughs> I mean, if you're into beaked uh, twunks. Twunks. Yeah. Um, so we start the previously on segment with shots of the Steel Clan robots from their introduction in Awakening Part 5, and we hear Xanatos mon monologue lines, the gargoyles have outlived their usefulness. I can't count on their loyalty. Then it just cuts to him ordering the Steel Clan to attack the gargoyles. And the next scenes are from when I believe Goliath and the others all just easily outsmart the Steel Clan bots and just get them blown up. And then Xanatos Rats. is literally just like, my Steel Clan isn't performing as well as I'd hoped. <laughs> Further proof that replacing everything with robots isn't going to work. Uh -huh, this AI bullshit, it's not happening. Yeah. Not <laughs> but Xanatos tried it once, figured it out within, you know, a week, and moved on. He, moved, yeah, he went to plan D, E, F, and G <laughs> afterwards. He still uses yeah. the steel clan bots. Yeah, but that's just because he already has them around. They're not, like, uh -huh. his main goal. True. And also, he himself is a steel clan bot sometimes He's, when he wants to yeah, be. Yeah, when he... You think he fools around with that? He dresses up and fools around. He's with Iron Man. Yeah, he has the the dildo launcher. We've discussed this in the past. Yeah, we we've, have. we've already I talked about, about that shit, honestly. <laughs> until you just now brought it up. Um, and then after that, we actually get to see Genutech again in the previously on. Oh, yeah, remember yeah. that bullshit from like 15 episodes ago? So long it's ago. about to be relevant finally. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get into that. But um, it's Xanatos requesting an update from Savarius on a certain project. Uh, we see Savarius pushing a button and he's explaining to Xanatos through presentation that Xanatos had requested from Savarius to create a living creature based on a gargoyle. Uh -huh. I also think it's so funny how we see like Derek reacting to that <laughs> there. We also haven't seen him or Savarius for like 15 Ooh, episodes. It's, yeah. it's been a while. So Savarius is showing this presentation of gargoyles and he's like to Xanatos, we don't have a living specimen available. Or has that changed? No, it has not. Savarius looks like such a creepy Which guy. Which is really funny because in this episode itself, it's confirmed that... It's already been started, right? Yes. The cloning. The cloning's already been started. They already had Thalog planned. They put that line in specifically to have Xanatos lie... In front of Derek. In front of Derek. Yeah. And but to like, force no, out Derek, a Thalog. I'm a good person. I don't do things like that. I don't clone people. But, I don't, but real, in realist... <laughs> like, Thalog had already been cloned by this point. Yes. So I, do, I do really like that. And I, I always enjoy watching that episode, that Metamorphosis, again, because I know that he's lying when he says it, so it's just like an extra little thing yeah. for me personally to be like, oh, he's such a fibber. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because it's literally just because Derek's there and the way the episode presents it to us, it makes it seem like we're supposed to believe him, but then it's like... 
remembering the context of Metamorphosis, I'm just saying, if you're a Gargoyles fan and you're, like, tuned in around Season 2, Episode 6 or 7 for the first time, you're going to be majorly lost with yeah, this previous you don't, you don't know. You don't know that Xanatos seduced Elisa's brother and, like, fucked him a hundred times before turning him into a monster man to make him more attractive to Xanatos, who then fucked him even more. <laughs> You won't know that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that ends the previously on segment, which to summarize is basically just Xanatos trying to fill the hole in his life that the gargoyles left. Robots don't work, and he can't grow his own gargoyle. Or can, or can he? he? I mean, how many holes will be filled this very episode by Thalog? <laughs> how, it's gonna be a lot of holes. So we, we fade into Xanatos' castle wyvern skyscraper tower as lightning flashes in the sky and the episode begins. The storm cloud clouds rolling in overhead. It's a perfect night for a dark and spooky episode of Gargoyles, which does this episode feel a little bit Halloween themed? Because it does to me. Sort of. There's a lot of spookiness when it comes to like the introduction of Thalog, there and is, I like, do the appreciate ambience. that. And yeah, and Thalog himself is very like he's like Goliath wearing a Halloween costume. Yeah. He's like I, I just a low effort costume this year. I just got a, a white haired wig and I got some body paint, and that's all I'm gonna do. And all the other clan members are like. Good job, Goliath. They're just happy that he's participating. Cool. So they're just... I, I do feel like I should preface this episode with one little timeline thing before someone brings it up. This episode technically takes place after the cage, which is why <sighs> Goliath is not surprised that Savarius is alive. <laughs> Oh shit! I didn't the cage was supposed to have aired before this, but it didn't. Wait. So when you say the when you say the cage, I'm just thinking of the Star Trek. Pilot. No, no, what, no, no. What is the cage the, in Gargoyles? The cage is the episode where Talon comes back. It was supposed to have already aired by now, but it didn't. Okay. So, so like he Goliath already kidnapped Savarius and all okay. of that. That already happened before this. Right. See. But that episode got pushed back super far. Okay. <laughs> when I watch the show. It's been so long since Savari has died that I forgot that he died anyway. So it's I wasn't confused yeah. by it, but I guess I should have been. I I, I okay. guess I so. Just a little piece of continuity. This is why he's back. No one comments on it or anything because okay. that makes so much sense in retrospect because I was also very like lost and it had also been so long since we'd seen Savarius that I just assumed we were just going with it. But yeah, that does make a lot like, of sense. There's so many subplots throughout the show. It's Season like, 2 has a lot, lot going them. for it. Um, uh -huh. We're gonna get more into that as we go along here. Um, so we zoom into one of the castle balconies and get an overlay of text disclosing to us that this scene is taking place one year ago. So during season one, season essentially. One episode. Um, we pan upwards, sifting through the castle walls, revealing to us the cloaked steel clan bots stored away within the castle. This intense orchestral music plays as it pans to a mostly uncloaked and somewhat hooded Steel Clan bot, which is activating by opening its mechanical red eyes. Um, which I, I also feel like the red eyes also is a huge factor in this episode because Thalog has red, has eyes. red eyes. And when we were talking about Thalog's hair color earlier, I just want to say now there are two villains with white hair and red eyes that, like, oh wait, but I forgot Upgrade hasn't. Or has it happened chronologically? I don't know. It anyway, has happened chronologically. Cool. So yeah, we have two <laughs> villains with white hair and red eyes, obsessed with Goliath. That's great. Love, love that color scheme, kind of. The red eyes always remind me of Demona too, mm. and it's interesting that Thalog's because his his coloration changes because of his cloning process, but it gives him specifically red eyes like mm. female gargoyles do. So yes. I just think that's like. Interesting. He's 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 got some some hormone estrogen going through on. Maybe is yeah. he is he a T boy? Who Could knows? Be. Is he a T girl? Whatever. Is he I... something? Is he gender? Maybe. Daylog is his own gender. Like he he'll like discover the concept of gender spectrum and he'll just make his own gender. So like he's he's filling out a questionnaire and it's like male or female. He just writes in Daylog yes! instead. Yeah! Is that? <laughs> so, okay. So this flashback for the reference. Um, takes place three days before Deadly Force, which is why Elise is not on crutches yet, but two days after the episode Temptation, which is why Elise is trying to get them to move out. 
Right, okay, yeah, because it starts with her giving this the same fucking speech. literally a gap that this could even take place in. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's during the time where she was giving, like, 50 speeches yes. a day to Delilah, but, like, you can't stay in the castle, yes. or you can't, you gotta <sighs> fucking leave, and he's like, shut up, I'm not I leaving. I uh, yes. commend Lisa so much. <laughs> um, which, it's really funny, because I was looking at the timeline, and those speeches, that, that point where she was doing that, that lasted only two weeks, but, like, seven episodes take place during that two weeks. A lot happens, okay. <laughs> They have to um, fight robots. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as the Steel Clan bot awakens, we see him exiting the room for him from his perspective. Like, there's this, like, green grid, and he's, like, fastening his claws against the door to open it. It's really spooky. All the while, we can hear Elisa explaining to Goliath, A thousand years ago, this castle was yours to protect, but it belongs to Xanatos now. Before he's released from prison, you need to find a new home. This one is lost to you. And Goliath responds with, not without a fight. As he speaks, the Steel Clan bot looks up at the ceiling. We get a voice lock display respondent to Goliath's voice. Then the Steel Clan bot bursts through the ceiling in dramatic fashion. Like the Kool-Aid guy. Yeah. (laughs) And he's facing Goliath and Elisa on the castle balcony. We also get this angle between the Steel Clan bot's thighs. The angle. Oh, I didn't even see that one. I always have to acknowledge the between the thighs (laughs) angle angle whenever I see it. I just call it the angle, TM. Like, that's just what it is to me. It's in, like, every TV show that's ever been made. That's what makes it so fun. Filmmakers cannot stop doing the angle. It's a fun shot just to have, like, a character facing another character and the character's, like, in between their thighs. Uh It's like... It's it's always vaguely such. Yeah, that's, how, that's always how I read it's it. It's domineering. Mm-hmm. Elisa, mm-hmm. like she's just found a Pokemon, shouts out a Steel Clan robot. <laughs> <And she's... laughs> what well, Pokemon's that? It's a Steel Clan robot. <laughs> As she's holstering her pistol, Goliath flexes to her left, readying for battle. The bot readies its laser and aims it in Elisa's direction. Goliath shouts, get back, before hug grabbing her out of the way, just narrowly avoiding the laser fire. Visibly annoyed, Elisa is like, I thought you destroyed them all. <laughs> it's like it's like you find a rat in the house. It's like, I thought you could have rat. <laughs> I, I thought you did this. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they're already dating. They've only been together for like two weeks. Yeah. But they're already dating. Neither of them will admit it. <laughs> So Goliath stands up and flexes again, ready to kick some ass for real now, saying, apparently I missed one. The bot tackles Goliath into the opposite balcony wall, like with stones crashing. Goliath grunting out as he's being manhandled over the edge by his opponent. Then... Uh, At which point he just is... His opponent during this is just grabbing his boob. Like, takes a full game full of it. (laughs) That's probably why I thought what happened next, like, I, I'm going to get into that. <laughs> then just for the primal play, Clinksters watching this series, i.e. me, um, <laughs> the Steel Clan bot, like, digs its claws into what is apparently Goliath's bicep. I thought it was his titty at first, and I kind of okay. wanted it to be. It looks like, it does look like it's yes, his boob in I this shot, so but then too. later on the wound is on his Arm. Yeah, so, I don't know. Maybe they just didn't want it to ha- be on his titty because then it would mean like they'd have to like dig into his boob sweat to like get the DNA. I want to see Owen. But I want to see that caress his boob, not his arm. Yeah. I think Owen deserves that much after yeah. all he's been through. Yeah, but um, the Sea Clan bot digs its claws into Goliath's bicep and draws like actual blood from it. Which every time the show shows blood, I'm just like, yes, yes. Um, we want more blood, always. <laughs> we just we want Gargoyle to be the bloodiest show that's ever been made. No, I like. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fact that we only get blood once in a while makes seeing it more worthwhile. Ooh, I don't yeah. want it to turn into Invincible, where it's just like blood everywhere <laughs> all the time. Under I hate high that. pressure, it just bursts out of your body whenever yeah. you come. So Goliath lets out like a little like sting of pain at that, like a fella who's just received his first spank in the night of the BDSM dungeon. So Goliath's just like, bitch, you just did what now? His eyes get all white and he just power pushes the Steel Clan bot off of him. Like while lay and then like 
the Steel Clan bot just winds up laying on the ground with his legs spread eagle before a pissed off <laughs> Diva Goliath. The Steel Clan bot scans him and fires a couple of lasers, only for Goliath to leap into the air, dodging them and landing his meaty gargoyle foot right on the Steel Clan bot's face, crushing its head completely. If that is not a power diva move, then I don't know what is. It doesn't help that the gargoyle's feet talons kind of look like high heels. <laughs> also, I feel like if Spiffy were to pick a way to go out, this would be a... Just under gargoyle feet. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. so too. I mean, I don't think he's into that <laughs> level of kink per se, but if he were, that would be an ideal way to go out. Um, so, having defeated the Steel Clan bot... Goliath's foot is still just resting on the destroyed machinery. Like, he's just mm. exuberating dominance. He's, he's conquered him. Yeah. And um, he tries to use this situation to prove a really stupid point. He turns to Elisa and is like, Do you see, Elisa? Xanatos will never drive us from our home. And she's like, it actually proves the opposite point, that you're being attacked here and that you should leave for that reason. Yeah, Idiot. like, Elisa just doesn't even bother with that bullshit, though, and runs up to his bleeding bicep, just kind of cradling it, sort of, and just shouting, you've been wounded. Oh. Her better half repressed calling him a big dummy at the end of that <laughs> sentence, and I commend her for that. She just to be a mommy dummy now. I like, love oh, Let me her. take care of you. Let me, let me give you a bath, Goliath. Let me do whatever <laughs> you need i'm your mother today goliath is like probably just now noticing it himself and decides to brush it off just replying with it's nothing and it just really brings back to light how freshly messed up he was during the more emo days of season one i think like he's not as broken in season two i've noticed and this is like kind of bringing that stark contrast into light with his character development um and then we get a dramatic sting, and suddenly, who else would walk into the scenery but good old Owen? Owen wearing a nurse's outfit, wearing, <laughs> wearing a mini skirt with his I medical wish. bag. He's like, <laughs> he is holding a medical bag of all things. Um, and like, Elisa sees him, puts her hand on her hip, and like points at him, like, "You've got some explaining to do." Uh -huh. Got some explaining, got to, some do, explaining to do, Lucy. <laughs> And then Owen is just like, my sincere apologies. There was a freak overload and it's power made. Oh, okay, okay, so I have to ask. Do any of you think that the e, the Steel Clan robot has a power matrix? Or did Owen just say random techno babble knowing that no one would question him? Okay. Definitely the latter. What the f <laughs> like, whatever, I, I, full, I believe that there could be a power matrix, whatever that is. He probably yes, saw I, it I believe. on his computer screen at some point remembered well, it and used it here well the best lies mix a little truth in so perhaps yeah. there is a power matrix and then he just re resumes before we could take the unit offline it broke free and then he pulls a cotton swab out of his like medical bag and then owen like touches goliath's bicep and flatly mm. says this should be attended to. <laughs> this should be attended he says the same thing to xanatos's dick every night but goliath this should be to. <laughs> Let me take care of this for you, boss. Aww. Goliath, like, growls in the response, making this, like, kind of nasty goblin face <laughs> towards Owen. Like, like, you just invaded my personal space. Uh-huh. Um, but Elisa picks up Goliath's big ol' hand and just holds it. I love that she holds his hand for it. It's just She's... like a mama holding someone's <laughs> hand during a flu shot. Uh it's like, just like, like he's her baby like, right now. Like, she's gonna give him a lollipop once this is all done. <laughs> um, she's like, he's right, Goliath. No sense taking unnecessary chances. I love her, like, attitude here, but it also did lead to Thalog. So it's like, <laughs> this is kind of like the scene of, like, stealing Goliath's, like, seed to create a homunculus. Yeah, milking him. And, like, okay, so with gargoyle physiology... They just heal overnight. Like, so I like, Goliath doesn't need the wound it seemed to. It's no, just like. I just don't. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably why he was growling, and Lisa just doesn't quite understand that yet, because this is pretty early on. Uh, or it's yeah. like, let us take care of you for a change. And yeah, it's like, you know what? It is not worth arguing, even though I know I don't need to have the wound intended to. It's it's not worth it. Yeah, definitely the attitude she has. Um, 
So Owen dips the Q-tip in like a bottle with like red liquid, which I guess we're supposed to assume is medicine or peroxide or something. Uh, I did think it was weird because it, it just looked like he smears red goo. Yeah, like, into like, a like a I'm crayon. Like, okay. He starts drawing red ink <laughs> into Goliath's scratches, and it to me looks like he's just like coloring Goliath. Um, <laughs> Goliath is like making these disgusted and in pain voices while Owen's Hot. doing this, still maintaining that goblin energy he had a second ago. Um, to be fair, like, if some guy was, like, fingering my scratch wound with a freaking Q-tip, I'd feel pretty weird about it myself. Mm -hmm. Um, as Owen's doing this, it begins to rain. Ooh, symbolic. Because it does rain, like, throughout this episode. Yes. I just realized that. There's a lot of thunder, hmm. there's a lot of storm, there's oh, a lot I of rain. Oh, I have so much notes about all the freaking lightning in this episode. <laughs> So, but we'll get to that. We pan up and we crossfade and get the one year later message displayed us, showing us that we're in what I presume would be the present time again. We see what looks to be the same quiz we saw in the Revelations episode. <laughs> Correct. I, uh, what are those called again? Long Island. Well, it's just Long Island. It's uh, they're uh, cliffs somewhere in Long Island. I don't. Interesting. I don't. I did find out from reading through. Greg's notes in this episode that those cliffs are in Long Island. He didn't specify where. Let me drive. There will be a future point in time where another character with anger aggressions will be walking along those roads wearing a full trench coat, covering his, like, wrestling singlet leotard or whatever. Uh, but what... He's at those cliffs too? Yeah, he, yeah. At, at the beginning of Vendetta's, that's where he steals the car. Oh and he's gosh. got, like, a weird trench coat on and everything. Anyways, yes. Oh, enough of me squeeing about a character who's not even in this fucking episode. Um, but soon, though. Very don't, soon don't, now. Don't, don't, don't. This is about Thalog. This is about Thalog. I'm trying to tell myself that. Double Jeopardy. He, uh, speeding down the curvy hill, we see Elise's car coming in like really speed like like she kind of drives a little dangerously to be going along these cliffs in the rain but i don't know i mean maybe she's just gotten some practice after her escapade with matt she's taking these curves like a champ yeah. like i guess she i guess she goes this way often like we are here fairly frequently in yeah. the show so broadway and lexington we see are following her overhead Alisa pulls out, like, her comm device that's, like, inside of her jacket collar. Her and pit com. <laughs> her <laughs> pit com from Space Monkeys. <laughs> and she, she speaks into it. She's like, sorry, boys. I owe you big time. Lexington, while flying in the rain, responds to her with a wireless headset device. It's okay. If some voice over the phone told me the power plant was going to melt down tonight, I wouldn't have taken any chances either. This is insane Was already. it a prank call? Was it Goliath or Thalog giving a prank it call? It must have it been. Was. Or like... And we know how. Later in the episode, we hear him do one of those calls with the weird... The voice, voice disguiser? Disguiser. Okay. It's Severus. It's, it's Severus who makes that call, though. But most likely... Okay, so here's the thing. I think it was Severus who made the first call, too. And it was just one of the instructions yes. that he got from Xana to Yeah, us. they, like, emailed him yeah. and was like, make a prank call <laughs> to Elisa Maza. Maza. That's so funny. <laughs> Severus is like, okay, that sounds like something Xanatos would say. <laughs> they like he's just the ultimate troll this whole episode. I love it. <laughs> Um, but, so, yeah, they must have been going to, um, the Shoreham Nuclear Power Plant, I'm guessing? Which, mm. considering the Meltdown reference? Yeah, that you makes sense. researched everything I love, in that episode. <laughs> like, I, I, am, I love having you here for this kind of show. Because, like, you know, I, I too research, but you, you go, like, research, research. Um, with so, the actual location. Yeah, so there is a nuclear power plant on Long Island. That's almost certainly where she's headed to right now. Mm. And that's probably why they're like, there's a meltdown going to happen at a nuclear power plant. Let's just investigate this weird car. Or was was it Three Mile Island? Was that a was that also a thing? That was in 1979, so Yeah. When it when the accident anyways. Ooh. Ooh. So yeah, like that was something people probably remembered at the time, because that was not that long ago. We don't want power plants to blow up. No, no one does. That's why they're out here in the rain. And Elise is all like, thanks guys, you're real troopers. 
Such a supportive mom, like, yeah, I appreciate you coming out here with me during the rain. Uh-huh. She's gonna give them some hot cocoa and Aww. some chicken soup later. So, as Broadway and Lexington fly overhead, suddenly, a big hulking gargoyle-like figure swoops down right onto Lexington, just kind of like body slamming him uh-huh. on the back. Like, bam! Yeah. Who is she? He, he lets out a lot of like little moans during the scene too, like ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And, okay, so during this, like for a couple frames, the the figure is lit up. Mm-hmm. Yes, if but, you go frame by frame, you can see. But notably, the lighting in the scene that they chose is all of the lighting in the scene is violet colored. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they try so, to like fool us. So like it's all everything is lit in. Goliath's colors. So when he gets lit by lightning flash, like he's suddenly illuminated in Goliath's colors. It's yeah, good. that's fascinating. It's good. I just had to call that one out because that was really. And then as as Lexington and Broadway like fall towards the ground too, we get panty shots of both of them. Yes. We see, like, see the yeah. asses yep. pretty that's well. So Elisa hears the commotion from her car and asks into her little coat intercom if they're all alright. Followed by a shot of Lexington and Broadway being taken in by the storm winds. It's okay. A- but we have to talk about how Lexington screams when he gets hit. Because he's just like, ah! It was, I'm like, wow, that was not a good scream. No. <laughs> I thought it was actually pretty good. Because that's the type of scream you give when like something totally unexpected suddenly happened and you don't know what's going on. It's just like, wow, like, like just, there was an impact. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... So this is followed by a shot of Lexington and Broadway being taken in by the storm winds. It's an interesting shot of both characters being hurled into complete darkness, like it's very spooky. But also at the same time, we see so many shots of like Broadway's butt and legs. <laughs> like it opens up and holds the focus the entire time on Broadway in these very compromising positions. Like he's spread eagle looking like a real yeah, snack right now. Like, oh no, I hope no one fucks me in midair. I haven't seen any more gargoyle ass from another gargoyle more than Broadway. Way. Um, well, and he's got a lot of ass to show. He's the king of ass. Yeah. Like, mid fall, Lexington responds to Elise's inquiry something got us! As soon as Lexington regains his balance, a big dark gargoyle claw, like, grips his foot. Like, this is a horror movie shot. It's, it's like, like, the monster has you. Suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just shouts out, It's got me! Ah! All, all I wrote for here was I, I wrote down that lie and I just said, Bottom talk. From <laughs> oh, you're right. That, that was where the ah uh, was that I was making notes off. Yeah. I just understood. No, that was the one That was the one I was referring to. Oh, trust me. I didn't miss a beat. <laughs> oh, my God. Elisa looks simply devastated hearing that little twink scream. She's, like, mortified and goes back to her calm and is just like, Lex, what's going on up there? Lexington gets tossed into Broadway, and they both kind of, like, grunt, and a Lexington's headset lands in the road right before Elisa's car, which shows they got, like, thrown ahead of her. Mm. Um, and then the, like, suspense strings start to play, and can I just say, you know what this soundtrack reminds me of? What? The anatomy for disaster level of Sly 2, like, the final level with Clockwork and Neela's big break and everything. <gasps> I have to actually play that game Okay. It's so good, and I love that soundtrack. I'm gonna use it in the podcast episode. Yeah. That's my favorite level. Um, and that also makes me appreciate the atmosphere even more. Um, so... It all, the anatomy disaster level also like tethers into like Thalog's character a lot because it's like mach- like machinery to create artificial life, creating a monster. Mm. I love that. Um, so the storm continues as Elisa c- shouts for Lexington, and as she's trying to see through her windshield, a dark gargoyle creature flies just over her vehicle narrowly passing by as if it's trying to get a good look at who's inside. This creature seems to resemble Goliath, but we do see its full color palette without like the lightning flashes here. Um, it resembles Goliath, but some slight uh, coloration changes, particularly the white hair and the red eyes, accompanied with this dark obsidian styled skin texture and a blue loincloth. Um, Which I would like to point out, you can only see any of that if you go literally frame by frame. Otherwise, you're not going to... It happens so quick that, like, it's so interesting when you pause frame by frame, you actually get to see Thalog in his full form early on. He's illuminated 
of course, by Lightning. Because wherever go Thela goes, he finds the perfect place to stay and that Lightning will strike down behind him and illuminate him. Okay, I was going to bring this up. How did he plan the lightning flashes? I don't know! How did he actually... Like, it seems as if it's part of his plan. It does! And I'm like, but how did he do that? I don't know! That is a good question. Um, the did God... he just stand there, wait for a lightning flash, and then immediately bolt? Like... The gods were, like, following him. Like, yeah, this is gonna be your monster for the evening, y'all. You enjoy him. So, this this uh, narrowly causes this causes Elisa to just completely swerve out of control in the rain, and it looks like she just narrowly misses going over the cliff in her car. Like if she hadn't slammed on the brake a second sooner, that just might have been it for her. This is a dangerous area. No. She exits the vehicle to see Broadway and Lexington land before her. Broadway sees her car and is just like, "Whoa, that was close." And Lexington's also just like, you okay, Elisa? What happened? So this next scene is crazy. <laughs> Elisa starts to respond, and she's just like, I'm not sure. Something forced me off the... Suddenly, she is interrupted by a lightning bolt coming in from the background, striking the nearby cliffs in the distance. And right where it hits, we see this like gargoyle silhouette standing on the cliffs looming over them that strongly resembles Goliath doing one of his flex roars. <laughs> it's like it's like perfect like villain atmosphere. And then like he kind of disappears dissolve effect style. The very next shot is just Broadway, Lexington, Elisa all just like standing there horrified it's from what they so just saw. so funny looking. Just, they're all just like staring like what the fuck? I don't think Elisa would ever be that scared. I will say that. Um, but she uh, just turns to the guys and she's just like no hesitation. Goliath? Yeah, they're like what? She knows her man's silhouette enough to recognize it. Then all of a sudden, we just hear, like, Goliath's voice, or Keith David's voice, I should say, just, like, laughing at them, like, some form of Phantom of the Opera-style dramatic effect. It's very theater, so very much. Shakespearean, very similar to the traditional <laughs> laugh that's often recreated in theater. It's like they like watched a movie of like a villain laughing and was like, okay, this is the type of laugh I need to this do. This is my <laughs> entire character now. <laughs> Maniacal laughter. So, Elisa, Broadway, and Lexington all look at each other like, what the fuck? And then we crossfade to Genutech's building once again. We see Savarius sitting at a desk and passing some cash to someone. 50,000 down, as agreed. You'll receive the balance upon completion. We pan out to see Severius not really in an office, but a bit of a laboratory-styled foyer, if anything. He's at like a teacher's desk with some chemical vial bottles displayed to his left, and the guy before him he's giving money to is like wearing paintball <laughs> gear armor. I guess it's supposed to be like retro bounty hunter thief gear, like bright red sunglasses for eye protection, a communication device in his ear, and like a little green armor piece on his just like torso that's clearly just plastic. There, there's a. I was honestly completely confused by this scene when I watched it because I didn't remember that like there was. Like, there's a talking about, like, Savars is like, this is the money to, like, steal this thing. I, like, I, it's been a while since I watched this. I was like, what are they stealing? Like, what? What's well, happening? <laughs> here, let me put it very simply. Savars is paying some guy $50,000 to indulge Thalog's kidnapping and bondage kit. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah! That's pretty much a good summary. He of is. Of like, it's just, this Savarius is Thalog's doesn't... plan is to kidnap himself. Uh, yeah. Savarius he is, like, like kid, thinking this so. is Xanatos' kink. <laughs> But no, it's it's Thalogs. He's just being catfished by Thalog. Yeah. So, and they, in the background, there are like animal cages and monkey sounds, and I think a furnace as well. The whole setup oh. looks crazy and is on par for Severius. Yeah. He gives the guy money, and the guy starts to like rifle through the wad of cash. Severius continues and is like, I do hope you and your group can deliver. So the guy responds, like, I think it's Jeff Bennett, I'm it fairly certain. Bennett. Yeah, it's like- Oh, they, they let him do something in this episode, yeah. since he's not Brooklyn. Well, that's why I asked you when I was talking about him or him. Oh, yeah. 
Um, because I'm like, Jeff Bennett is playing four characters in this freaking Jeff episode. Jeff Bennett has so, so much range. It's like, he does. unbelievable. Yeah, like, he went from being the little floating ball in Space Monkeys mm -hmm. to being, like, 50 characters in Gargoyles. <laughs> Um, it's like if Owen tried to do a European accent. Is it German? Is it Russian? I don't know. He's doing Schwarzenegger. Oh, is it really? So yeah. it's like Austrian. That's the idea. Okay, gotcha. So I was in the kind of the European region. I was kind of correct. Um, um, but all right. Not only is he doing a Schwarzenegger outfit, but he's wearing an outfit that looks straight out of G.I. Joe. Or yeah. Or something insane like that. It does not look like it belongs in Gargoyle. It's like a paintball gear outfit. Like, like I said, he just doesn't look like he's like an actual thief. He looks like he's gonna like go out for some drinks with his buddies and shoot paintballs at each other. Um, G.I. Joe is, of course, another very homoerotic cartoon. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but he also has a communicator on, and it's like... The, got this giant metal box on the side of his he head for it because you know it's a nineties. <laughs> this wireless this, technology. Just no it subtlety. Just so ridiculous. It, it, he looks stupid. Does this guy die later? No. no. Like once Thalar comes out of that crate, we just sort of never see this guy Correct. again. Right? Correct. Unless he leaves. So it's so funny because the baby leaves. The show sets it up like he's gonna get killed, but then he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> So the guy responds, um, don't sweat it, Dr. Savarius. With the right price, we could lift the Venus de Milo out of the loom. Yeah, secret fifth ninja <laughs> turtle, Venus de Milo. <laughs> then the man continues, but it would be easier at night. And Savarius is just smugly like, no, it no, wouldn't. No, bitch. You're Trust stupid. Me on that. You don't know. He, he kind of plays with like the information he has and that this guy doesn't have like like no trust me it's gonna be easier at the it'll be so funny <laughs> <laughs> for me not for you <laughs> we quickly cut to the clock tower where the storm continues like in the distance Elisa is explaining to Hudson the encounter she had alongside Broadway and Lexington and she's like when the thunder passed Goliath was gone and Lexington adds on, oh, and you should have heard his laugh. It makes my hair stand on end. If, if I, I had, had any. any. He's like rubbing his bald head. He's a bald Is boy. Is this his way saying like he gets turned on by villains? <laughs> it could be. Could be. Yeah, like, it made his hair be. stand on end. Like, yeah. like he gets but his, since like... I don't have hair, it made my dick stand up instead. Yeah. <laughs> like something stood up and it was he doesn't have hair, so... <laughs> Like, maybe he likes getting chased by monsters, <laughs> bear-hugged by wolf. Um, I Hud think some part of him does like it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hudson scratches his head and ponders these this information. He's like, hmm, that doesn't sound like the Goliath I know. Are well, we, we did hear Goliath do an evil laugh once already in this show. <laughs> when was that? Enter Macbeth. When was that? Near the end, um, when... He gets accused of uh, working for Demona. He just starts up a full evil laugh at uh, uh, oh, yeah. at Macbeth. And Macbeth is just so confused because he's like, "What is going on?" <laughs> Maybe they and Goliath heard... is just like, you're, "You're so wrong. You're not you even were the... the dumbest person I've ever." Anyways, we have to. heard Goliath do an evil laugh <laughs> Maybe once before. The Greg heard that and was like, "This would be interesting." We need to have that, Keith that, David that, like, do more like, evil. There laughs. are a lot of facets that led into the creation of Thalog. We'll get into that later. Yeah, um, I have notes on all of that, but... In this scene here, where Elisa's talking to the gargoyles, I also noticed that Hudson is, like, holding his belly the whole time. He just has one hand on his belly as he he's talking to them. He is pregnant, maybe. <laughs> it sort of looks like, like what a pregnant woman does, but it's for him it's just because he's... He's fat and hot, so that's just how he's he stands. Just, you know, sometimes. he's had a good night of you know retiree life. Yeah, he has, a, he has a load of cum inside his belly. From and he's, Jeffrey he's Robbins, he's hanging out with him. Jeffrey, yeah, he has Jeffrey Robbins's. I, that ship, I, I will, I will him. sink with that ship. That's the best ship. It's a good ship. I need to write more of that ship. Yeah, that'd be so sweet. I, I would write more of it if I weren't so lost in the sauce with Wolf. Remember that one episode we, we were so gay for them that we forgot that Jeffrey Robbins was blind? Yeah! <laughs> anyway. Um, so Broadway interjects while squatting perched up atop the clock tower balcony. He's like, no, let's love Goliath tell us about it. Yeah. Where is he? He's already like, throw down. He's like, I'm gonna beat his ass. It was ass. totally <laughs> Goliath, guys. <laughs> Hudson replies, he and Brooklyn are out on patrol. At least that's where he said they'd be. 
Bronx nearby is also perched up on the balcony, readies his position, and so does Lexington. And then Hudson uh, takes note of, like, just the dawn fast approaching. They probably found a ledge to spend the day on. The day on. Somewhere, Somewhere he feels safe. safe. Somewhere where Birchland can suck his dick. Okay, all right. So to add into that, in the previous version of the script, it was, Brooklyn was with the other two members of the trio in the okay. first scene, and Lisa wasn't there. Lisa was the one who was off with Goliath. Mm. Interesting. Um, yeah. But then they swapped positions um, because that let them get away from a whole bunch of stuff that didn't matter. I'm not even going to why. I, I, I do like in this episode that Elisa sees Thalage and is like, yeah. Goliath? But then she's like, I this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So like, I do think that she does very well in that role. Yeah. Uh, uh, at this point in my notes, I also had to ask, did they stop the power plant from melting down? Did we ever go to the power plant after this? It didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> it was a prank call. It was a prank call, but I was like, did they still check it out I after that? I think maybe they were coming back from it. I don't know. Um, so Hudson perches his big gargoyle booty on the balcony, and one by one they all enter their stone sleep. Elisa squints, presumably thinking of Hudson's words. Um... And then we cut to Xanatos' Castle Wyvern skyscraper tower penthouse thing, uh, panning up to one of the towers only to reveal a statue that closely resembles Goliath. Goliath? <laughs> but we were just talking about how he'd find some place he feels safe to spend the day. Why is he at Castle Wyvern? Oh. And then an ominous, like, tuba note plays, and we overhear Xanatos <laughs> speaking with Owen from below. It's nice to have him here, guarding the castle. It's nice to have him here, as he's just, like, jerking off underneath the statue. <laughs> and then Owen's there jerking off with him. He's like, yes, it is. <laughs> Xanatos begins to walk back inside, Owen following. Come, Xanatos says. Xanatos said, come. Come, said Xanatos. We've got a full day of work ahead of us. Come. Come. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, okay, so this next part is, like, actually super interesting. Owen's just like, the Amir is having trouble meeting your deadline, and I didn't know what the Amir was, oh, so I investigated I it, and apparently the Amir is the same motherfucker we see in Egypt in season 2, episode 30 with the pack? Correct. They're talking about that guy meeting his deadline. Yep. Apparently. So what deadline is that? Well, Wait, the deadline... quest for immortality. And the Amir, I actually. The Amir was first referenced back in the Edge. At the Edge, yes. I know. Yeah, I found that out doing research after hearing Owen saying that, and I think that's so fascinating um, that they kind of wound up tying this loose end that Xanatos and Owen would talk about nonchalantly in between scenes from season one bringing him up again here in season two. It's and then very casual. And then just introducing him as an actual memorable character at such a later point in the series. So, uh, Greg has gone on record saying that, like, he it was just a throwaway line originally. By this point, it, he was planning on bringing the Emir in as a character. Mm. That's fascinating. Uh, like, he didn't know when. He didn't know what would happen this season. But he was, like, at this point, he's like, it was probably going to happen. Yeah, like, gar gargoyles sometimes can be such a fascinating puzzle piece sometimes. Not just with, like, literary lore, like Arthurian and Shakespearean stuff, but also with its own lore as well. It's, like, so yes. much thought and attention put into the little details here that I just really appreciate. Greg does not like to waste things, and I adore him for that. Yeah, it's a very interesting writing style. And, yes. like, th does this, like, this is, like, a, a foreshadowing of something. It happens, like, three episodes from now. It's, yeah. like, it's so long in the future. It's not, I mean, this is season two, episode 17, when is, and that's is episode Egypt 30. Episode? Okay. So that's, like, 13 episodes away. I feel like the, the world tour to me is, like, an what? eternity. So I just assume is so long in the future. Well, it's one of it, the best, if not the best, episodes during the war, world tour, though. Oh, interesting. It's a good episode. We'll, we'll see it. how because good the pack's it is. In it. We will I mean, see how good I, I it think is. We all know you're here for Wolf getting turned into a puppet. Just turned into a puppy. I do think yes, that's that incredible. is the most fucking adorable looking puppy I've ever so seen in my goddamn cute. life. They could have gone any route. They could have turned him turned into like a weird man baby wolf hybrid thing, but no, no they went with him a, as a Puppy. puppy and he's like this angry little puppy like that just describes his entire character That's to a t so and i love cute. it so much 
Anyways, we're not here for that. We're here for Thaywalk. <laughs> Our wolf counter is now at at least three pounds. This is what three happens when four. you gave me the beginning. <laughs> oh, we'll find some way to bring him into the equation again. <laughs> Anyways, um, retracing back to the scene at, at hand, where Owen explains the Amir is having trouble meeting your deadline, Xanatos stops him by giving him the hand, like just suddenly gets like real homo style close with Zip him. Zip it. And almost like putting his fingers right on his lips. Mm. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he just started shoving his whole fist in his mouth in just a second here, delivering a message stop. Uh, filling his mouth with, with any He's, liquid that Xanatos he can. Xanatos is just like all... Pissing in his mouth. Whatever he has to. Oh my god. <laughs> like, like <laughs> Owen just shows up, shows up to the gargoyles. He's like, and then like, like, just opens his mouth. Xanatos' urine flowing out like a frothy waterfall. Spits it at them. <laughs> that would be gross. It anyway. would be. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Xanatos is all like, quiet, Owen. Quiet, bitch. Quiet, girl. And then they listen closely to the sound of what sounds to be helicopter blades propelling outside. You hear that? They both run outside and investigate. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and, like, helicopters are so loud. Like, they're, and they're just like, wait, we have to be quiet to hear this. I'm like, it's because right outside. There's no way they, they think, don't like, hear it. The second Xanatos heard it in the distance, like, he's like, wait, is that a helicopter I hear? And he just told Owen to just Then they rushed out and the helicopter's like right there. It's like so outside a helicopter with an open hatch seems to be dropping rope where the Goliath-esque statue is hanging out. Which... You know, it's his first appearance, and he's already in a harness. We see a bunch of dudes wearing the same paintball gear armor as the fella from Severius' meet, and climbing down some rope and surrounding the statue to attach some grappling hooks, the harness. Owen and Xanatos race to the scene, and we get a shot of Xanatos just standing there shaking his fist at the sight <laughs> of his statue being robbed. I think that was very funny. Like, he's, like, because I wouldn't expect him to, like, be doing something, but he just, like, shakes his fist like old yeah. man at clouds. Yeah. He's like... <laughs> They attach, like, a couple of grappling hooks around where the Goliath statue's armpits would be. It looks like a harness, but it looks like they just literally just tether his armpits to the helicopter. Yeah, and then they just those pits, boy. fly off with the statue. Um, Owen grabs a nearby rifle using one of Xanatos' ridiculous wall panels. I love that they just have weapons, like, everywhere. I'm glad they brought that back. It reminds me of Professor and Xavier. Yes. <laughs> Um, but Xanatos commands Owen to hold his fire as the gargoyle must not be damaged. Owen pouts and is just like, is this a plan you neglected to mention? <laughs> like, he's, like, this seems like one of your plans. Xanatos is just like, no. Maybe Damon is behind it, Macbeth perhaps, or Renard. I've never lacked formidable enemies, but be assured, whoever it is, was is going to pay. Then it zooms in on Xanatos' mouth. Extreme close up. And he just sneeringly just says, most dearly. Dearly. He's so gay. He has a gay moment. Most we cut to dearly. a shot of the helicopter loading the gargoyle statue in the carrier, which we do see the gargoyle statue's ass in the process. We hear a fella who I presume is the same one Savarius paid off relay to his radio. Yeah. We got the merchandise doctor. Xanatos saw us, but he held his fire as you said he would. Dr. Severius then just appears on the pilot's interface, like video call style, but yes. Severius is in front of a green screen for some reason. I feel like I could easily just Photoshop some heinous shit in these frames, like goddamn furries getting their cheeks clapped in the background, knowing that motherfucker's methods. The poor people he's doing business with would probably have to deal with it, and every time they bring up what's going on in the background, he'd have to be all, oh yes, ah ha ha, don't worry about that, I'm just a bit of a freaky frog is all. So is he like, is he like the Twitch streamer? Yeah. He has like the green screen yeah. behind him? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> and like, but like... The image is at an angle, too, so he looks weirdly off model, but I think it's just because the, the image is, like, stretched in a weird way. It's just, like, you see fucking, like, Talon clapping Maggie's cheeks in the background. Ew. Or, better like, yet... It's the worst couple you could have. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to go full curse. <laughs> Or it would be fucking, Claw and Fang. Yeah, That's I was who... gonna say them next. Yeah, they they would be the preferable 
too, uh, obviously. <laughs> it's so funny that Severius only made, like, one female mutate, but made, like, three, or, like, he made so many male ones. It was hard for oh, any woman to agree to go with Severius, I imagine. But and men were like, Maggie... okay, we'll go with the creepy guy who wants his dick sucked. Yeah, we'll go along with them. Maggie was, like, the one bitch who was just like, ah, yeah, I'm I want to go get out. money. I'm so high for a homeless girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's my baggy impression. <laughs> Anyways, uh, splendid, Savarius says. You'll get the rest of what's coming to you tonight. Meet me at the rendezvous point, but not until after dark. And it zooms in on his face all obscene like. He's got like one crazy eye pointing in the other direction. And it just makes you think that he's gonna have them all killed, but that's not the case. Yeah, because he says you'll get what's coming to you, which is what Jafar says in that yeah, Aladdin but movie. In like, this case, Savarius actually your means it. Yes! Reward. He just talks like that! That's just how he is, though. <laughs> so then Martin gives me the creep. Then he smiles and says, Savarius, out. <laughs> yes, that was my notes. He fades out and the pilot just pushes the end call button on his dashboard. But it's funny because he actually starts his sentence before he even pushes the button, cutting it pretty close. And he's like, something about him gives him the creeps. Like... <gasps> Uh, he's he's he got he's gonna get his money. He's never gonna deal with this person again. Supposedly, whatever. Maybe we never see him in the show again. So I think he makes it out alive. He uh, makes maybe. it out. Maybe he doesn't get turned into a weird monster. He just gets out of the show, and we never see. We him can again. only hope that uh, someone was able sake. to get away from Savarius's creepy clutches. <laughs> um, back to the clock tower at night. We see Brooklyn and Goliath returning to their home at last. Um, we fade to Goliath already in mid-exchange with Elisa and the rest about the events from yesterday. Brooklyn just coming in from behind Goliath. Interesting. Um, <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase there. Lol. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Surely you know I am not in the habit of playing childish pranks or laughing maniacally in the dark. The way Goliath says it, too, is so funny. He's just like, y'all need to get real. That uh -huh. is not me. And Hudson's backing him up, because he's like, do you even know how to laugh maniacally? Which, in itself, is a pretty funny joke, because the sight of Goliath laughing maniacally does sound out of character until you pointed out the Andrew Macbeth instance. <laughs> It, it takes a lot to make him laugh. Yeah, yeah, like, like yo, working with the Mona, that makes him laugh. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Brooklyn chimes in, no, you couldn't have. Goliath was with me all night. We uh -huh. never left Midtown. I had his dick in my mouth all uh, night. And I'm just like, <laughs> you guys were in Midtown together all night. Yeah. Doing what? Checking out Midtown comics, probably. Yeah, yeah he, this is a gay thing. <laughs> I don't get it, Broadway says. If Goliath was in Mo Midtown, who was messing with us last night? I almost said Motown. <laughs> <laughs> we cut to the same road from the beginning of the episode in which we see the aircraft flying overhead to what could be assumed is the rendezvous point of over the, like, this, this kind of, like, oil rig in the distance mm -hmm. with a helipad. Um... And it drops off the cargo container carrying the Goliath S statue, and he flies. The, the The helicopter does fly away, so whoever's flying that, it's gone. They get out. It's probably Fox. Yeah. It was. <laughs> the paintball crew all gather at the front of the cargo <laughs> box, where they meet Savarius for the drop off. Um. So. Savarius is wearing not only a blue Letterman jacket and cargo pants, but is carrying, like, a tranquilizer gun. And the guy in front asks, what's with the tranquilizer gun? I've never seen a statue that needed to be put to sleep. He says, laughingly painting the cargo container, probably, like, throwing some alarm clocks in the fucking cargo container. Like, yeah, this thing's not gonna wake up. What are you fucking talking about? <laughs> and then, um... <laughs> <laughs> With this wicked shit-eating grin, Savarius just slowly says, You have no... And then suddenly, boom. <sighs> this is like the opening of Jurassic Park. <laughs> the gargoyle within the crate begins to, like, bang back. Like, pummeling the wall of the container completely. Um, it slinks to the ground as the men leap out of the way in terror. Revealing the same gargoyle creature Elisa th saw through her windshield earlier. Uh... A Goliath duplicate with a different, much more sinister color scheme. Standing there, pissed off and red-eyed, 
and he bears the strong resemblance to a demon who has just freshly broken out of the gates of hell. Uh huh. He flexes and lets out this much more <laughs> modulated variant of the Goliath roar. It almost sounds like a pain-stricken scream into the night with all this like monster modulation added at the end. I know they said they don't need to edit Keith David's monster roar, but I think in this instance they kind of do, just because it's like a warped version of Goliath. Well, you're the audio expert, so you'd be able to tell. Yeah, like at the end there, you can kind of hear like some some modulation. But that's just me. It's still effective. Um, so I think that's where my part that's, ends. That's where the commercial is. I like how Thela, like, he's very much his own person. But you can you can see the Goliath mannerisms. And, like, yeah. I know he's, he, like, he's posing as Goliath in some of the episode. Like, when he's flexing for no reason yeah. and roaring. But also, he flexes for no reason in other scenes, too. So I'm just like, that's just Goliath's genes in him. He <laughs> has to flex. He has to, you know, yeah. gargoyles don't whine. They roar! Take like, he has to do the roar. Take all of Goliath's masculine diva energy and apply that to the big jerk uh -huh. subtro. Yeah, it makes him hotter. Yeah. I'd like to point out that they look <laughs> also set up Getting himself tranquilized. Yeah. Does that happen? Well, it's oh, yeah. It is right. I would have liked okay. to have I forgot seen that. He, that. he does actually get tranquilized, I guess, and that's why yeah. he's asleep. Or maybe the tranquilizer. Well, he's pretending to be asleep. Maybe. Why would he actually be tranquilized? Because, because he's got he, a fetish. Severus doesn't know he's working for. But why not in his email just say, don't tranquilize him? Like. I don't know. We don't know. Thalog has a, has a plan. He has a plan. He's a tranquilizer kink. Yeah. Like he, he, so he just wants to give Severus a good time? He or he or wants to Thalog get has the tranquilizer. That's what I'm saying. He gets okay. off on the idea of acting powerless. Yes, but knowing that actually he has the power. Yes, yes. That's the submissive mindset. I mean, he has like... Xanatos' kink. He just gets off on tricking people. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, surprise, though. It was all part of my plan. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Oh my gosh, okay. So we come back from the commercial and we see that Elisa has brought the gargoyle. She's brought Goliath, Lexington, and Broadway, like to the literal spot where that mysterious other gargoyle attacked them. Mm -hmm. So they're looking around, they find a Genutech collar. Which was just convenient. Which is just conveniently there. Uh, very useful for pet play. Uh, <laughs> it's also a tracking device. So Lexington surmises that since Genutech, you know, genetic engineering is their whole thing, that the creature may have been one of their creations, which is actually correct. Yeah. So he, <laughs> yeah. he he comes to the conclusion that they like wanted him to. I guess did they like want him to reach the conclusion? Yeah. Yeah. I guess so, like, yeah. They just let, he left a little Easter egg there for them. <laughs> so Goliath tells Lexington and Broadway to pay Genutech a visit. Uh, I don't know where Brooklyn and Hudson are. They're just, they're just sitting this episode out. Yeah. Uh, it's Hudson's turn to get his dick sucked. Yeah. He's, <laughs> they're, mm -hmm. they're out on patrol, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know. But if Genutech is involved then Savarius must also be involved. If Savarius is involved, then Xanatos is involved too. This is yes. just a complete circle jerk. There's, yeah. there's a row of dominoes falling, except yeah. it's all of them coming. They are like, okay, we can deal with that, but let's find the creature first and yeah. you know see what's up with it. What do they even do to like look for him at first? Okay, I guess they just sort of like fly around like i guess Goliath goes and flies around and elisa just sort of walks around i guess oh, like because when we come back to them like it's just elisa's walking back and like i didn't find anything <laughs> and i'm like okay they're like well, playing scooby-doo yeah they look for clues mm -hmm. but back at castle wyvern um okay i thought this was really funny so the phone is ringing in yeah. Zentos's office and he's sitting at his desk <laughs> Brooding. Brooding. He doesn't answer the phone. Nope. We see Owen, like, walk across, like, the whole room. <laughs> and he gets the phone for him. I just thought it was really funny. Uh, oh, that's so funny. And, like, Owen doesn't even say anything. No, I, it is his job, I guess. But oh. I'm just like, Thanatos, you can pick up the phone. Like, <laughs> even 
when he picks up the phone, he doesn't say anything. He just listens for a second. Yeah, like, all he's just like, Xanatos here. But, okay, so the call is from someone with a voice disguiser. However, if you listen closely, you can tell from the weird accent. It's, it's definitely Severi. Like, it's calling. not even, like, trying. Like, I, I, it doesn't take, like, a fucking, like, rocket scientist, but it still takes them some effort to, like, find out who it is. It's, it's sort of insane to me that Xantos and Owen, like, they, they don't jo go right to Severius. Like, they, they get there eventually, but they go through, like, another route to, like, figure it out. They find I out that the I did not realize rest. that that was actually Severius' voice actor, it's I'll be honest. It's definitely Tim Curry. It's I did not get that. I brought up, up on Tim Curry as Severius once. I love him as Severius in this episode. He's very Incredible. funny. Yes. <laughs> He's gonna get a lot of lines in a bit. Oh, boy. So the voice tells them, at 2 a.m., you will come alone to the offshore oil rig at Black Rock Point with a sum of $20 million in cash. Failure to pay will result in the immediate extermination of your prize specimen. Then we just see Xanatos literally packing the money. Yeah, he, like, yeah, he just has $20 million, like in his office. <laughs> it's, like, it's his personal safe, I guess. It's like, oh, this, this shit's not hard, you know. <laughs> So, after that, they do some analysis, and they they weren't able to trace the call, because the, the call didn't last long enough for them to do it. Uh, but they do find out that the owner of that oil rig is Xanatos. Secretly. Secretly Xanatos. So, so, they how? know like that it's someone within the company, or like within one of his subsidiaries, or whatever, who is like using those resources to do all this. So they, they do assume it's the various that he's he's using what he's got. Um, and it's, it's pretty funny that everyone is very distrustful of each other in this episode, and Thalog uses that distrust. He perfectly predicts like how everyone will react and assume that everyone else is like double-crossing each other when actually it's him all along. I love Thalog. <laughs> he's, yeah, I like how intelligent yeah, he's another like hyper smart gargoyles bad guy, and there's already a bunch of them. But I really like that. That, thing that also it. really makes sense as to how he would later take the reins, like because I think Xanatos is eventually just completely replaced as the main antagonist. Eventually, yeah, because Xanatos becomes he becomes a good guy. Yeah, eventually, Ish. He's a good person. He cares about two people. Yeah, his comic maybe three people behavior is really commendable. I will say he's uh, a hero. He has a noble heart. Sort of. I was thinking of the first run of the comic. I haven't seen the second run yet. Okay. So. We still gotta read that yeah. shit. Oh. We have them all now, so we can read we them. We have them, finally. So do I. You all should get to it. It's great. We will. <laughs> I, uh, I but... keep thinking things. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Xanatos goes on to explain that Severus is the only other person who had intimate knowledge of the Thalog project. Uh, and he hates to lose a mind as fertile as Severius is, but, you know, he's not a dummy. I just think... is like, I'm gonna get his ass. Yeah. Must be me. But also, like, his word choices are interesting. Uh, following that, we see Lexington and Broadway, they're breaking into Genutech. Uh, because Lex is leading this mission, it actually goes well, and they don't get caught. <laughs> Unlike every other time anyone else breaks into anywhere in this show. Yeah, um, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna name names, Brooklyn. But so Lex uses his elite hacker skills by performing just like a I word said. search. I love it. <laughs> so he searches for the word clone. And it works, and they and rewarded with with a full, literally a full minute of exposition. Okay, but like when he does it, he's like, "Oh, I know what I should type." And Broadway's like, "What?" And he's like, "C L O N E." And Broadway's like, "Stop and think." But he can do it now. Like a month ago, in 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 Steers, he couldn't have. That it comes up in little instances here and there, and I love that. It's very cute. Mm -hmm. But okay, so basically. <laughs> Anton has left a series of video journals, as if this is like a triple A video game. <laughs> and he delivers the following data points. So, the attack on Goliath from that rogue steel clan bot at the start of the episode, uh, it was orchestrated so that Owen could harvest tissue samples. Um, 
I don't know why they didn't just use the cum that Goliath had crammed into <laughs> Owen's mouth whenever he needs to deliver a message as Anatos. But whatever, they wanted blood. So Phalog is made from blood. Um, mm. And yeah, so the, the tissue sample, yeah, it was used to, to grow a clone of Goliath. Uh, they used an accelerated growth process to age it to adulthood. So it's only been about 19 weeks, but Thalog is now fully grown. Uh, but a side effect of that process is that it messed with Thalog's coloration. Uh, so that's the reason that he looks like that. It's, it's actually been closer to a year. They say 19 weeks. No, no, it was 19 weeks in the first flashback when he was still in the test tube. Yeah, like, that's with the logs. Like, they have the dates <laughs> in the corner. Okay. I'm not looking at the dates. I was just... Well, There's so much. Did they put that loincloth on That's him in great. the tube? I wanted okay. to get to that! I was, okay. Well, I'll just, okay. So, while th this is all being said, we do, we see Thalog floating in one of those, those sci-fi tubes that clones are always grown in. And yes, he's wearing his loincloth in it. So my question was, did they clone the loincloth too? No. Like, no. <laughs> what happened was, no. Xanatos dressed him up to look like Goliath so he could have- For his own kinky sex fantasy. Yes! Like, oh my what god. What other reason is there? That's the only reason! <laughs> <laughs> but he picked a blue loincloth. Yes. <laughs> It looks good on him. He looks great. Red um, and blue, very complimentary. As someone who has a collection of of men floating in tube imagery, I appreciated adding this to that. You're gonna collection. like next episode. We do we see the the pact floating in tubes? Goliath is mine. Oh, that episode. Okay, yes, Goliath <laughs> will be just in the fucking tube. making out with yeah. like the the glass while salivating, the tube. Yeah. steaming it up. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I, 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 mm. Okay. Wolf <laughs> count is at what five? <laughs> no, it's definitely more than ten. The wolf or count. Seven? I can't help it. Okay, so. Severius states he's also been giving the clone a subliminal education program, personally designed by Mr. Xanatos to teach his own unique slant on things, i.e. gay slants. This is like, this is like how M. Bison <gasps> fucking made Blanca in the Street Fighter <laughs> said, I said that too! It reminds me of the Street Fighter live action movie where the same yes. thing happens to Blanca! <laughs> Yeah, well, they, they, they tried to level up the evil, but no, um, in this case, Thalog just gets all the, all the, uh -huh. he probably gets, like, pictures of, like, money projected into his mind. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck kind of training, like, they, they made him like, a psychopath, Xanatos is what Xanatos just, like, fucking naked lounging on money, he fucking projected those images into his Like head. Toda from, from that one oh, Utena no. episode when Mickey was, like, dreaming of him, and Toda's <laughs> like, yeah. oh, yes, it's me, I'm the sexy Bishonen man who fucked your sister and maybe you in the future. And Vicky's like, oh, I shouldn't be having these impure thoughts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, all this going down, the mutates <laughs> haven't even been created yet. Oh my gosh. Um, Because, like, during the third, I think, flashback is around the same time that Fang and Claw were recruited into... recruited to be mm. transformed. Um, like, he's got this entire project happening with that one alongside... Also, most of this is taking place during the huge, giant time skip between reawakening and leader of the pack. Interesting. Um, which, like, you kind of forget happened, but there is a five-month time skip in the show. Hmm. Well, TLDR, there's a full-grown clone of Goliath now, and it's probably evil. So after that... The next scene, just for, the, for dating it, is at the beginning of this month, so November, like, this being the month that the episode takes place in... It's the same day that Xanathos gets the letter from himself explaining the time travel plot. I'm just... What a day. I'm fully... <laughs> I wonder if Remy has also sent us an email oh, explaining oh, every oh, single oh, date oh. in this episode, which will be like <laughs> ten pages long. <laughs> I... <laughs> I just... I, I, there were so many dates 
explicitly shown on this yeah. that I just researched, like, and what happened on this date in Gargoyles? What uh-huh. happened on this date on Gargoyles? Or we could watch it like me, and every time a date's shown, just close your eyes <laughs> and pretend that you don't see it, so that you don't need to research it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm kind of the same way, in which I'm glad I have people can who can explain the timeline for me, because, like, I can hyper-analyze frame-by-frame frame shit, but the timeline... Timelines... I've talked about my issues with timelines and time travel and all that. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so we return to Goliath and Elisa, and they're, I guess they're both coming back from just wandering around, and they're like, we didn't find anything. But then they're like, but what if there's something on that oil rig? Because we can see Xanatos going to it on a speedboat. So they're like, I guess we should also go over there. <laughs> Incredibly funny. The scene is incredibly funny because of what is going to happen later during my segment, but I'll get to that at that point. So Xanatos gets to the ridge. He's dressed. He's dressed in a trench coat, uh, like he's a flasher, with a big case full of money. Um, Severius is also there, and we just we get this weird scene because Severius thinks that he's been following Xanatos' instructions this whole time, and Xanatos doesn't know that, so he just thinks that Severius is being weird, is what <laughs> this scene is. So, like... <laughs> it's so funny. But at some point, Severius sees the suitcase, and he's like, ah, yes, the blood money. Mind if I take a peek? And Xanatos is just like, you're the kidnapper. So... <laughs> They open the, the suitcase up and it's full of money. And Zavaris has a weird line where he's like, I don't even know they made bills in $10,000 denominations. <laughs> Which is like, does that mean that Xantos brought Monopoly money? But like, cause... <laughs> why does he say that? Is it a joke that he's making? I, I think like... he's saying that he's never seen a bill that large before. But they don't make $10,000 At least bills. Not, not that Do we they? know of. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe. Um, this is like, it's yeah. like Xanatos. If you, if you Google it and find it, out what they actually all do. All the bells are going to have Xanatos' uh, face on it. It's Xanatos. It's Xanatos. The $10,000 bill features the portrait of President Lincoln's secretary. Wait, they make 10, what? It's the highest denomination U.S. currency ever to publicly circulate. I thought $100 was the highest. Um, <laughs> no. So. I mean to the common uh, man. Up until... Uh, 1969, they did print $10,000 bills. In 1969, they got rid of the $10,000 So Xantos has super old money. Apparently! But, yeah, but is it still effective? Yeah, they've never... They Yes, it would be. Because the U.S. revenue... I mean, like, they, like, like they, they, they can't deny that they did at one point put those bills out there, so I guess... It yeah, like, be. it's the same reason, like, like hay pennies are still accepted. Because if, if something was money once, it will always be money. I think, like, that basically. would make the $10,000 bills twice as valuable, wouldn't it? Yeah, they're, they're, they're incredibly they're probably expensive items, yeah. for collectors, apparently. I was just reading about that. It's fascinating. Okay, so I thought that Savaris is making a weird joke, but actually it's a totally different weird joke. <laughs> that Xantos has... Old, <laughs> weird money in this suitcase. Because uh, I guess that's that's how he chooses to bring twenty million dollars. But while that's while, while we're puzzling over this joke, what Xanatos is doing is he he drops his trench coat like he's a sexy stripper. Yeah, for a second there, I thought Xanatos was stripping booty ass he's naked. Just like, to fight Severus. He's like, "Hello, grandmother," or whatever. What's the line from? Anastasia, or it's darling, like, it's me, Anastasia. Anastasia. <laughs> like, yeah, Xanatos does that. Uh, but he's wearing the gargoyle armor, like underneath it, and he like he shoves Zavarius up against a wall, and he says, like, you know, Anton, I'm not by nature a vengeful man, but your behavior has forced me to give you a spanking right now. And Anton is just Zavarius is totally thrown by this. He's like, Ugh. Uh, but. <laughs> While that's happening, Goliath and Elisa are, like, flying over the oil rig, like, Goliath has Elisa in his arms. Mm. And they see this, like, this weird, to them, what looks like a weird day hookup happening. And they're just like, what 
are they doing? And Goliath is like, let's not interrupt them just yet. Yeah, like, let's so let them, funny. let's let them get this out of their system. Whatever it is, let's whatever vile act is Goliath's happening funny way go of to completion. Who cares? He's an ally. He's a gay ally. He wants them to let to you know, let them have their fun. And while down below, so Savaris is like, I don't understand, sir. What did I do wrong? And Xanatos starts listing things like kidnapping, extortion, betrayal. Where do you like me to start? And then Severia starts like... He's just like, oh, I get it. We're being watched. And then he's like, yes, I betrayed you. You robbed me of my greatest creation, my ultimate achievement. I only took back what was mine. <laughs> and he's like... There. How is that? And Xanatos is just like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, what is this? Savarius <laughs> might have a crush on Xanatos. He just likes to ham it up a little he bit. Loves he to has an everything. actor's soul. Yeah, but in he did him. everything in this episode for Xanatos. Because so. he did the same fucking thing in in Derek's episode where he was like, I'll electrocuted by electric eels, and he got to be like, <laughs> And in that same episode, Dan's just like, you're the worst overactor I've ever seen. <laughs> so, like, this is just something about Severius. He, <laughs> no, I, I love that they let Tim Curry just go hog wild with the theatrics. While that's going on, Goliath and Elisa, they hear, like, a cry coming from the oil tank. So they open it up, um, and what do they see? Like, some sort of weird color inverted clone of Goliath in full bondage just chains manacles um, and that's how you really know it's a clone of Goliath because he's in bondage all the time in this episode and that's, that's how you really know that it runs in the family like we have to add this to his king test now we've got full bondage uh -huh. this is actually the first time he's been in bondage so far add it to the list we have harness we have tranks we have collars we have bondage. kidnapping, <laughs> kidnapping. Uh, uh, we're about to get something else in a minute here he just yes! says Goliath it's you at last I am Thalod and Elisa just says whoa to that <laughs> Which is like, like, what else is there to say? Yeah! She's like, you know, because like the second she heard Goliath's voice, she fell in love with him. So now it's like she's hearing Goliath's uh -huh. voice coming from someone else. So it's like, it's like, what the fuck like, am I feeling right now? She's already imagining the threesomes. Yeah. That like the potential of having two Goliaths. Um, but Goliath's an asshole, oh, and yes. he's just like, he just he asks what kind of abomination Thalod is. It's like, jeez, and Thalod's like, uh, like. The same kind of abomination that you are, bitch, because I'm made from you. I'm made from your blood. It was your blood that spawned me. Uh-huh. And Goliath is, he's actually horrified by that because, okay, this is a pretty huge blow to your bodily autonomy. Yeah. That someone has made a duplicate of you. Yeah. Without your consent, like against your will, like it is a violation. It is. And he does feel it, like, he feels that very strongly, and he gets it, so it's, It off. reminds me of the scene from, like, Gone Girl, where, like, the husband finds out that the wife, like, stole his semen to make a baby, and he's uh -huh. just freaked like, about Like, it's that. fucked up. Yeah. It also made me think of X-Men 97, of which course. we've been watching, oh because my. there are also clones on that show, but mm. we, we don't need to go fully into that. Yeah. Goblin at queen. the moment as a goblin queen um so elisa helpfully explains to goliath what cloning is and she, she describes it as like they they grew theolite from a piece of him like a cutting from a plant uh and goliath completely rejects that because he's like goliath like he's theolite is not a piece of me theolite is me is how he puts it and he says first Xanato steals my home now he pieces out my soul! And Theolog is just growling and in chains hearing this yes. shit. Just gradually getting angry at Goliath's uh -huh. reaction to his existence. So like, there's this great shot where like Goliath is like flexing yep. and roaring and being really mad. And then we pan over and like Theolog is also like growling and also flexing in oh, chains and like like pulling at them. And, them. Like there's so much muscle and emotion on display, it's like, it's incredible. Uh, so... 
The lion's ready to actually kill Thalog. I, for, like, I'm not for, sure what he's gonna do. It, it seems like he is going to, like, like he's... Like, in his mind, like, it he, seems to me like he's thinking, like, Thalog should not exist, so he's going to unexist Thalog. Like, it seems like he's just having a momentary existential crisis, but I, you know, Elisa is, like, you know, his mommy here again. She's, like, holding his hand. This is my favorite part of the episode. Because yeah. Elisa steps up, and she, she has, like, this beautiful series of lines. She yes. says, You've got every right to be angry but no right to take it out on Thalog. What difference does it make how he came into being? Now he's as much a gargoyle as you are. In a way, he's almost your son. How can you reject him? I just like to notate that gargoyles have no familial, like, <laughs> labels, but Yes, Goliath... but she, from her, she would be using that sort of language. Yeah, but Goliath yeah. does kind of... He, yeah, throughout this episode, he is sort of like, he's my son. I'm like, yeah, that's... <laughs> now that you point that out... That didn't occur to me at the time. That is sort of weird. He accepts... But, but okay, here's the thing. The gargoyles do ha call the younger members of the, their clans their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're the clan's children. Right. But they're, they're still their children. Like, they, we do see, hear them refer to them as their children. Even if it, there's no blood relation, like, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I just wanted to point out that um, yeah. Goliath accepts Thalog being his son much yeah, quicker than... Yeah, it seems to be like a per like he personally he is like, Thalog came from me. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, with Angela, that never yeah. happened. No, he, he accepts Thalog a lot quicker than Angela, is my point. <laughs> Listen, Angela's boring as hell. Thalog's really interesting. Is. So Goliath is more into Thalog, and I appreciate that about him. Yeah, I'm more into Thalog. <laughs> But so to, after Aletha drops some truth, Goliath, he just, he gives this sigh, and then he says, you're right, of course, which I also like, because Aletha is right, mm -hmm. and she's, she is pretty much always right, except when she's like, you should let Owen take a sample of your blood, and sure, it definitely, nothing bad will happen from doing that. <laughs> Uh, so they both agree, okay, we're not gonna kill Thalod, he is also a victim here, in the yeah. same way that I am a victim. But, you know who is to blame? Xanatos! So yeah. they're gonna kill him instead! <laughs> which I love for them, but they, they're gonna set Thalod free first. Which would be wholesome, <laughs> but... before they get to that, Thalod actually frees himself! It was all a ruse. And he just jumps on Goliath uh, with a ventilator mask. It happens so fucking fast. And like he puts it over Goliath's mouth, mouth and nose and he's like, That won't be necessary. The shackles weren't locked. Yeah, no, like, I love this scene. Definitely one of an early awakening scenes for me, uh, I'd say. Uh, of a man just being... Just Co losing like, consciousness. Like, he takes him out chloroform style almost. Yeah, like, like, he, he has a kidnapping he king. He leaps onto Goliath with vigor and pushes the mask onto his nose and mouth. And it's so mm -hmm. sudden that Elisa falls back. And Thalog, like, takes Goliath down to the ground, pinning Goliath down in, like, this muscly chokehold from behind, mm. still pressing the mask into mm -hmm. his face chloroform style. And the whole time, Thalog's eyes are just glowing red. And he's Evil. just, like, snarling, and he's like, that won't be necessary. The shackles weren't locked. Yeah. Like, the way he, like, hisses out the words is so, like, domineering. Oh. And Goliath the whole time is trying to push himself up off the ground, but he can't, but he just can't. getting weaker with each weaker. passing attempt at struggle. And it's, it's at this moment that Goliath realizes Thalog isn't him. Thalog is him, but a top. <laughs> and in, in moments, he, he passes out in Thalog's arms. Yes. And, and then Thalog stands up, and he flexes over Goliath. Just in in dominance, just like I'm the strongest. This this, this scene right. pushed a I lot. I need to of contest money. that. Oh one. What? Goli Thalog's not Goliath, but a top. Thalog is Goliath, but a dom. Yes, thank Goliath you. Goliath is he's a Goliath dom. tops, but as a service top. He's, he's a service you. top. Okay, so is Thalog is he a dom bottom? I think so. Cause like, how many th times has he had people? Tie him up, or catch, whatever. Well, he's in but control. But he has to be in control. Yes. Oh my god, he's a, he's a power bottom. He's a power bottom. That makes sense even better. 
But the the last line he he says before commercial is he says, and just for the record, I'm more of a gargoyle than he'll ever be. He's like he's saying this to like Elisa. Oh, and so he just laughs evilly as he advances <laughs> menacingly doing on these her. crazy anime girl poses, uh-huh. like reaching at the ceiling, parting his hands at Elisa as he's speaking. And then before laughing maniacally and making his way towards Elisa, I think her scared face here looks really weird. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Did it? I, I, I mean, like, I just don't picture her being as scared as the show depicts her. I just think it's supposed to be, like, a spooky thing. I don't know. I mean, Baylot's a pretty scary guy. I mean, yeah, and then again, it is, like, her crush, but evil, coming towards yeah, her. Yeah, and that alone is, like, really, like... That, that's gonna throw you. Yeah. To like, like, to, like, to sort of see something that's like so familiar, but also so different, like, that's, that's that freaks you out. Yeah. Mm. But there is the commercial, and when we come back. So, we open up over black tinged waves and pan up to the oil rigs. And very briefly, they show the open suitcase is still full of cash. This is important, because this is a magic <laughs> trick we're about to deal with. Um, Xanatos is still holding Savarius by his shirt collar, up, pinned up against the wall. And if it was someone other than Savarius, it would be super hot. But uh, unfortunately, it's Savarius. <laughs> Savarius is also destined to a lot of tank stuff in this episode, and I just want to pretend he's not there. So I'm like, uh, whatever. That's funny. <laughs> Doctor, what makes you think this is all just an act? Why you, Mr. Xanatos, and your instructions? What are you talking about? The order came from your office by electronic mail, electronic which he mail. emphasizes so heavily, and I'm just like, because it was the tell, early this 90s. Is the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god. The the very brief period of time where anyone ever used the words electronic, electronic mail. mail. For those of you who don't know, that is what they used to call email. <laughs> Uh-huh. Because I'm sure at least one listener is going to be like, what is it the heck is electronic mail? Electronic <laughs> That's what the E stands for. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, he, Severus just continues explaining, prepping this rig, hiring the mercenaries, the ransom call. You planned every detail. I just assumed the subterfuge was part of a Machiavellian scheme against one of your enemies. Him and get up, even while he's doing the explanation. It's such a fun line, though. And Zeta Jones just stares at him, like, kind of disgusted, and then just suddenly drops him to the floor. You assumed incorrectly. He's just... He's not happy, because usually he's so nice, but, like, this time he's like... He's no, like, he's, no. There's I too many I, unknown factors. I actually got swindled here, and I don't know how to feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> and he he doesn't yet know who's even responsible. No, it's just like what is what. So, so Severus just continues. But if you weren't calling the shots, who was Owen Fox? And Zane says, without a moment's hesitation, just don't be ridiculous. Without skipping a beat, no, he's not even no, gonna no. consider that shit. No. Uh, he, he's his boyfriend but, and his girlfriend. So he uh-huh. turns around, he's walking over to the edge and, of the oil rig, and all of a sudden he, the smile crosses his face. And Ferris is like, who else had access to the castle? Um, which I need to point out, for a rich guy, it's very interesting that Xanatos doesn't have any servants, cooks, maids, or home staff other than Owen. Because he doesn't trust anyone. I know! Yeah. But it's, it's very interesting because, like, one of the main things you usually see with rich people in fiction is having a lot of staff, mm-hmm. and that Xanatos doesn't do no, that. No, he spends it all on real estate instead. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably why he continues to be rich. Yeah, it's not a bad setup, actually. Uh, anyways, um, so Xanatos just closes his eyes. Well, what do you know? The kid turned out to be a real chip off the old block. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Severus just does the most exaggerated cowering ever. <laughs> and it just comes out of nowhere because there's been no sound, no nothing. It's just something cowers. Mm. And then once that he finishes, Thalog chimes in with him. Indeed he did. And he flies in and he places an anti-acid tablet on Xanatos' <laughs> suit, short-circuiting it. A massive <laughs> anti-acid, anti-acid tablet. tablet. Yeah, that's the good way to describe it. And oh. Xanatos does a... Ah! kind of scream while he's getting electrocuted because as he falls to the ground slumping suddenly he understands Brooklyn. 
and then understands Brooklyn. Falls oh. and, and the the unconsciousness kink. Yeah. The electricity kink. Mm. We're adding these at Thalog. And Thalog like raises his hand. He's like, all the old blocks. That's a really hot shot of him, by the way. Yeah. Like that's what true big dick energy looks like. Yeah. Um, so we cut. Um, which I'm still shocked that this wasn't where they decided to put the commercial break because yeah. like the, it feels like this is where the commercial break because there's a fade from. out because Xanatos loses consciousness and then they want to transition to like he's got all four yeah yeah I guess if they if they touch a commercial there kids might think that Xanatos was dead that so that's probably I why. wonder if this was originally where it was intended to be and they I got told by S and P that they had to move it they rather yeah they that makes so because that way the very next scene like the first thing you see is Xanatos waking up yeah. So, you know, he's not dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, S&P, okay. Well, I'm... And anyways, we wake up to him. Zayda's just waking up, and he's like, I'm impressed, they log. You played Severus like a harp. But if money was the bottom line, why not okay. ask? I do think it's very funny that he says he played Severus like a harp. He doesn't say he played him like a harp. He's like, oh, no, you, you got that guy. You didn't get me. You yeah. Know, I'm, like, chained uh-huh. up and bonded right now. <laughs> <laughs> also, this motherfucker successfully got Goliath, Elisa, Xenotos, and even Severius as a bonus in bondage, all in one so, singular yes. plan. Yeah. Oh. Impressive as fuck. Now we pan over them, and it's Xenotos first, and then we see Severius, Elisa, and then an unconscious Goliath. Slumped over Goliath. Uh-huh. So they all have their arms chained over their heads, other than Goliath, who's now taking the exact spot that Thalog was in. Except this time, he's actually bond- in bondage, unlike Thalog. There's yeah. a certain symmetry there. Yeah. So, so there. Xanatos was like, but I'm the sugar daddy. Why didn't you just ask me for money <laughs> if you wanted it? <laughs> so, Thalog, meanwhile, just tosses the keys into the briefcase, which we see is still filled with money. Keep this in mind. <laughs> okay, I didn't keep track of the money. I d- does it change at some point? It might. It might. <laughs> Okay. We'll get into that, um, because, uh, yeah, so Thalog always has contingency plans, and I think he had one in that we never get to see, because we never see what happens. Because the contingency never came up. Well, it did, but we never see him after he escapes. Oh, okay, okay. So, but I'll get into that, what his, his plan was. Anyways, um, but Thalog responds to him with, maybe on your terms, not mine. And he just points to himself as he's hamming it up. Because, <laughs> Did you really expect me to spend my life being your stooge? And then he points directly at the camera while having, like, enormous tits. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor's private guinea pig. He just leans in closer to the camera. You two didn't go to all this trouble just to raise a fool. 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 He said it. <laughs> and now... Severus responds with, Typical, you do and do and do for them, and what happens? They twist the knife in you. <laughs> and I can't tell if Severus is talking about the mutates, um, you know, <gasps> someone he's dated, or God forbid he's actually had kids. I mean, he just goes into full mom mode. He's, yeah. the, he's the mother to so many of these creatures. I know. And they never appreciate him. <laughs> um... So and Th- Thalog says not to tempt him. Yes. Yeah, like, like he comes in close to Savarius. Yeah, he literally grabs him again because Savarius keeps getting grabbed this uh-huh. episode. Mm-hmm. He's just like, don't tempt me. He's the play. He lifts him up like they're gonna kiss. But I they don't really kiss. like the way he says, "Don't tempt me." Like he's actually gonna fucking twist the knife. Yeah, that's really I have hot. a knife. I have a knife, and I will twist it. Uh, he, he, he's, Calls are the knife. Mm-hmm. So, Thalog then lets go and walks away. And if you are really paying attention to this scene, you'll see Goliath waking up in the background. So, this is when he's regaining consciousness. Mm-hmm. Or if you just liked looking at Goliath and yes. bondage. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, Thalog is just like, time to go. I've got plans of my own and $20 million to see them through. And then he shows off the briefcase, which is now closed to everyone, yes. very prominently, and makes an evil laugh. <laughs> I just did, I like I got the money. <laughs> I thought the shot here was just really nice as he's walking off with the money and he's only wearing a loincloth. Yeah. And I I just wrote in my notes I just said iconic. That's <laughs> that's what they lodge is to me. Yeah, he's an great. icon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so Savarius, who is convenient, he's here because none of the others would ask such dumb questions. But Savarius goes. So how are you going to spend it? Stroll into a bank and open a checking account. <laughs> 
That was just sassy. Well, I guess just like, I'll find a way to make it work for me. I set all this up, didn't I? Uh, He's gonna start turning tricks and open his own pimp ring. I'll just send some fucking emails, bitch. <laughs> That's how I... <laughs> Electronic mail is the way of the future. <gasps> so Goliath finally cuts in. Uh, now awake, where he's like, Thalog, don't go down the, that path. Money is a necessary evil in Xanatos' world, but not in ours. Join us. Join your clan. Daddy mode. I really like that line, because it, it, it makes me think of Star Trek. He's like, yeah. we don't, we have a moneyless society. We're in a communist utopia right now. Like, you don't need to exist in Xanatos' capitalism world. You can exist with us. I'll be your daddy, mm. and you can be happy with all your friends, all your guard friends. Yeah. I just think it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. It would probably mean a lot more if they weren't getting money from Elisa. Or <laughs> food from Elisa's <laughs> paying for it. Okay, they steal food. Yeah, they I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they dumpster dive. I don't know where they get their food from. <laughs> they eat a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Enough uh, food to feed a family of gorillas? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Thalox just like... And waste my life playing guardian angel night after night to a decrepit city infested with inferior humans. And he points directly at Xanatos. Uh-huh. He's sounding a lot like Demona. Yeah, know. I was gonna say. Um, which I have to point out that he's calling New York of all cities decrepit. I mean, I mean parts of it are. Parts of yeah. It. Like, New York is, is very much a, a place of highs and lows. If you, if you like, yeah. actually live in the city, it is kind of, yeah. Anyways, uh, where's the prophet in that? Oh, then he sounds like Xanatos yeah! again. <laughs> like, he fluctuates between Demona and Xanatos. Mm -hmm. And Galactus replies with, Life for a gargoyle isn't about prophet. It's about protecting those you care for. And then, Thalog, and this is what we need to discuss, this line. This but let is me say such it first. a Xanatos line. Let me, let me say it first, and then we can discuss yeah. this one. I considered caring about you. Took some effort, but I arranged for you to join this party because I'd planned to share the money with you. He just walked up closer. But our little family reunion disappointed me, father. So I've decided to hate you too. And then he gets like right up and face to face with him like they're about to kiss. <laughs> yeah, like it's very not, not the first not the last time that's gonna happen. No. thalog has got daddy issues and even though his dad is like, okay, my initial reaction was a little overcharged, and Thalog's just like, no, I don't care. I hated it and I hate you now. <laughs> okay, so he claims that, but So okay, I have a lot to say about yeah, this. You can so, start and then I'll go over I'll, my stuff. I'll start by okay, so the the idea of Thalog, first he says I considered caring. And then he says, I've decided to hate you at the end. It's very clinical. Like, he experiences emotions the way Xanatos does, it feels like. And that, like, he, he doesn't really feel them in the normal way, but he, like, cerebrally, like, <laughs> it's, very, it's very interesting. Like, mm -hmm. him, Xanatos, Similarities. and Fox are, like, we, they're, they're, they're psychopathic, but they, like can decide what emotions they feel at certain times. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very interesting. Emotions are optional and yes. nothing more. And like, but like once they decide to feel these emotions, they do feel them like very strongly. Like he yeah. does hate Goliath, but it's because he's chosen to hate him. Mm -hmm. uh, like not because like of it's not unconscious, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Like, most people experience them unconsciously, or they're not aware that they are making these choices. But Xanatos, Fox, Thalide, they are aware of that. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's neat. No, yeah, they're all very intellectually so, so, let's start breaking this down. Okay. So, you already covered the I considered caring about you part, so I can skip that. The next part, I took some effort, but I arranged for you to join this party. So let's discuss that line. He ar he arranged for him by like posing and <laughs> roaring in front of lightning and leaving a collar behind. Right. So obviously he wanted he was trying to get Goliath to chase him down. But the only reason Goliath found him was because he randomly saw the speedboat while flying <laughs> around. Uh, what? Well, yeah. I don't think so. Maybe Goliath was supposed to show up. I think not he's supervising. For this. He was he was planning something else for Goliath. But he he did want he wanted them to find the 
the audio yeah. lied that Savari yes. said lied. So that he, was he, he definitely wanted for. Goliath to hunt him down at some point. Yeah, I think you're right. That probably wasn't right here because he already has his hands full of Xanatos yes. and Savari. He did not right? want all of them. He, at that's the no. oil that's a lot of fucking factors. I mean, like even of. if you look at like Thalok's initial reaction when Goliath walks into the room, like he he um he, he he's kind of like the first thing he does is he introduces himself. Yeah. Like, like, because he, uh, it's like, it's almost like he was caught off guard, but like, then it's like, you know, he compensates. I mean, yeah, he does want Goliath to love him. Yeah. And then when Goliath rejected him, I think. At first. Yeah, at first, exactly. Like, Goliath learns, like, very quickly, a lot faster than Jean Grey yeah. does, that, hey, a clone of me is a like. person, too. Yeah, it's also a person. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, like, Thalide is very quick. He's like, no, my dad rejected me once. I'm gonna fucking kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's just like, he kind of just lets he kind of, like, fuel him. Yes, okay. So his original plan, he was going to approach but... Goliath with a big suitcase of money and be like, hey, Goliath, hey, dad, I have all this money. Let's go into a father-son business together of taking <laughs> over the world. <laughs> Um, Pretty much. Which would, that would have been a very interesting scene if that had happened. Yeah. So, that was his plan. However, you keep saying that he's disappointed because he was rejected. Uh -huh. I think he's disappointed because Goliath was telling him that money doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, and that's he's a like, good point. I can't be with anyone who doesn't see the world the way I do, which is that money is all that matters. People are just objects for me to use. Right, it's the same exact issue that Xanatos mm -hmm. has with his own father. <gasps> oh my gosh, <laughs> I love the levels <laughs> of psychodrama here. Oh my god. Thalog is such a fascinating character. Like, because he's, he's the combination. Like, he is the combination of the two of them. Yes! And it makes it really interesting. Like, I've been telling people for years that Thalog is just Xanatos and Goliath's love child. He is! Yeah. I mean, he says later on, he says his three dads! Yeah. I, mean, like, I, was, I wrote that He down. is yeah. a child of a gay relationship. A gay three-way, if you will. Savarius is just kind of the supervising, like, uncle. <laughs> I don't know, he was there. He, uh, he was, he he was the doctor him. who delivered the baby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Elisa's just just the one woman who gets to be here. She's just having right. Great. We got, went over all the parts of that line because I want to talk about all five segments of that line. So good. Come it's too. So and like, good. Like, okay, this this show does dialogue so well. Like, they yeah. don't waste any line. And they can have one line mean like 20 different things. Yeah. Like, they, it's so good. Mm -hmm. um, so now, then he walks over to Elisa and tenderly strokes her face. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a shame about you, my dear. I'm afraid you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And Elisa just pulls back, goes with the job. The job. Okay, right. so for my notes, I just said he does note he'd have liked to tuck his dad by yes. sleeping with Elisa. But oh well. <laughs> like, the way like, Taylor, like <gasps> strokes her cheek. It's like, ugh, what a creep. I want to fuck him so bad. And Xanatos also sort of puts the moves on her a couple times in this yeah. episode, too. It's like, Zan yes. so Zayla got that from him. Yeah. And his father also loves Elisa. So, like, there's a, there's a lot. And like... as we know, he will later on make a clone of Elisa, too. Uh, which will be interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Elisa and, and Demona. So, um, it's a very notices something odd about that. It's like, a shame about her? What's that supposed to mean? And Xanatos, who's actually paying attention, is just very matter-of-factly informs him, he means for us to die, Doctor. So he's like, die? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, I can't die, I'm immortal. Like, I, I, that I concept know. doesn't apply to me. <laughs> like, Severus is the only one, like, experiencing these events in, like, a reasonable way, like, freaking out. Like, Xanatos is just like, yeah, whatever. Like, <laughs> Severus is like, it's, what? It's so funny how Severus is like the most normal one here. That doesn't make sense, but it's I so know. funny. <laughs> like, everyone else has figured out what's going on. It's like, okay, well, no point freaking out. We'll just find a way out of they've, this. And they've Severus, resigned themselves. Severus, meanwhile, is like only barely figuring out what's going on right. every time it's explicitly explained to him. He is book smart, okay? So, the Elog turns around to explain this rig is not as empty as it looks. My first visit out here, I found 200 gallons of stored oil topside. And we cut to look at the four of Which, them. That's sort of insane, that yeah. they just left oil? Like, okay. Supposedly. I guess. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure how much I trust anything he <laughs> says. He claims he found all the oil already here. 
Uh, whether that's true or not, who knows? Hmm. But he just likes to. But now, because he can claim that he found the oil here, now he's killing Xanatos with his own failures. Whether or not the oil was actually left here, or whether he transported it here himself. He's going to claim it was here so that he can thrust the knife into Xanatos. Uh-huh. It's, it's every one of his lines. I always have to check, like, are you lying or telling the truth? Even if it makes, doesn't matter the lie, if it's going to make someone else feel worse, he might make, do the lie. That's just his style. I That's know. his way. That's how he was raised, literally, subliminally educated. Okay, okay. So I do have to mention that at one point Greg does mention that... Um, because Thalog has not had decades of socialization, he's much more in tune with his own body's natural urges. Uh, he was saying that in regards to um, the Elisa scene, but I'd say Thalog just continues, on my way out, I'm gonna open those tanks to flood the platform with oil. The flare gun will be my parting shot. She pulls out a gun from somewhere. From, from his groin region. Yes. <laughs> Which, we will see how he stores the gun from now yeah, on. Yeah, I have like... <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just yeah. poking out of there. Um, he opens it up and lightning flashes the moment he opens putting him in silhouette uh, and then he does another evil laugh as he closes the door and tightens the hatch. Did you bring up the all three of my proud father's line? Um, I don't think that happened yet. Oh yes, wait, it, no, it I, I did, you read it. I did skip it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be my parting shot. I can't wait to see all three of my proud fathers go out in a fiery blaze of glory. Three dads. He also does tuck the flare gun in right before he leaves, like in yeah. his crotch area, yes. right? Uh, like that thing is poking his dick. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I was going to bring that up later, but yes. <laughs> um, so, interestingly enough, um, just another aside from Greg, supposedly one of the reasons why Goliath has much less trouble accepting Thalog as his son is because he's only one of several fathers. Which is more in tune oh. with his natural way of thinking. About They're com it. They'll, they'll communally raise Thalog. Yeah. That's nice. Thalog is just, he's just a homeschooled kid. He hasn't been socialized <laughs> like the other gargoyles have <laughs> been. He needs to go out and play once in a while. Um, so Severi starts struggling, and Elise is just like, sighs, and then just. <gasps> she just takes her <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> Right out of the manacle. <laughs> what? She's crazy. She's actually crazy. <laughs> so, like, the whole reason why she's not panicked this entire time is she's known she can get out at like, any time. As soon as he leaves, I'm just gonna also leave. Yes! And, okay, I just, I wrote down, I just wanna say Xanatos is like, he says, I love a woman with delicate wrists. And yeah. I just say, okay, gay man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mister, I get pegged nightly by my mistress. Okay. And this is just like, you work with handcuffs as much as I do, you pick up a few tricks. She is into S&M. Let's be real here. She has also dabbled in the S&M. She's definitely, yeah. Uh, she's a little role player kinkster. Well, I mean, this is why she's with Goliath. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Savaris is, of course... Well, how does this affect me? Because he's like, <laughs> how does this help? She can't break our chains. Uh, and she's just like, Goliath can. Because he's also not panicking, because he's like, these, these chains, Goliath can break these chains. What's the big deal? Mm -hmm. Except he can. <laughs> yes. This is now, once again, Xanatos has proven to have been taken once, be one step behind. Right. She's like, no, he can't. I created the gas they log used on Goliath. Goliath has now gotten up and is just pulling at the chains. Um, it was designed to leave him weak and helpless for hours. And I'm just like, so you made a gas specifically for this. He made a gas specifically to leave the li to leave gargoyles weak yeah, and helpless. helpless. Does this gas ever come up again? I don't I think so. Know. But okay, so I just wrote in my notes. I just said we should remember that this gas exists for we the should. next time we role we play. Need to. For the next time we do a chapter of capture competition, this yep. gas is specifically Ooh. made to make Dargoyles weak and, and helpless, helpless. For, hours. for hours. Like, just imagining the whole clan, like, moaning, all slumped together. I just... I've done that before. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Goliath's flexing the chains and not making any progress. So he finally stops. He's like, Elisa, he's right. You must flee while you have the chance. My sister's like, and Lydia and I with these two, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
not even consider her again. She's so no. sensible, I love it. Suzanne's just like, unfortunately, the antacid tablet Thalog hit me with <laughs> shredded out my armor. That leaves me powerless, too. Oh, they're all power. All the men are powerless. It's just the woman that has to do all the work. <laughs> Typical. Typical. Uh -huh. So now Samaris actually gets to contribute for once. He's like, that's it, the disc. The disc may be our salvation. It still carries a charge. And said, it's just like, then it might have realized Goliath enough to offset the gas and restore his strength. Yep, just sort of shove it up and his butthole. Goliath butt just and, looks at him and is like, you realize I'm not Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone is into Electro Play. Yeah. And they're like, today you need to be into Electro Play. Okay, <laughs> so he's just discovered he is. Now he's going to make Goliath into it. Because as soon as he's discovered he's into it, he wants to do it on Goliath. He always does. He's like, Goliath, I found the coolest thing. <laughs> And Goliath is never interested. He's like, I don't want to do things with you. Anyways, Zane just ignores him and looks to uh, Elisa. Elisa. Because she's the dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Detective, if you do the honors. And Elisa's like, I don't like this at all. Goliath just responds, Elisa, don't worry, I'm into it. Elisa, like, <laughs> you've, you've, punished, you've punished me in a bedroom setting so many times. Like, this is just the same sort of thing, except oh Xanatos and Savarius are watching, okay? Just pretend they're not here. Just spank me, Electro spank me, whatever you need to do, okay? Um, so th now we cut to Thalog, who's ripping ink open the oil tanks all over the place, just spilling oil everywhere. And suddenly he hears Goliath scream. Now I know where I got the temper. I, I love... He's he's also just got the flare gun still, like, in the front of his yes. leg cloth. Like, he and loves the way the gun feels against his cock. Yes, Probably. so... I'm thinking, oh, they're doing this off-screen because they don't want to show Goliath getting electrocuted. And then, we cut back to the scene, to him where he was screaming, before he was screaming, and uh -huh. watch him get electrocuted. <laughs> yeah. With a, a giant splash panel from a comic, They basically. would never miss the opportunity to show Goliath being electrocuted. No. For oh, any reason. It looks very good. He looks so good during this. And then, he, during this, he pulls the chains off. Um, so we cut to everyone stuffing outside, because he's gotten everyone else's chains broken too, apparently. So strong. And Elisa's just like, Thalog wasn't kidding. One spark and the whole rig goes up like a Roman candle. Oil everywhere. And it's just like, the launch is this way. And <laughs> just starts walking, leave. starts walking off without waiting for the others. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, Tavares is right after him. <laughs> yeah. Um, Goliath, I mean, I was like, go, Elisa, I have to face Thalog alone. And Elisa's like, no, Goliath. Please, Elisa, he is of my blood. He is my son. Uh-huh. <laughs> We have to, and, and just like all fathers and sons, we need to have a dick measuring contest. <laughs> <laughs> so Goliath goes out and finds Thalog, because we cut again. He's like, it's not too late, Thalog. We can wipe the slate clean, start over. Now, because Thalog has a double meaning on everything, his next line is, over my dead body, or better yet, yours. Um, so first of all, we get an over my dead body, which... He is going to wipe the state clean and start over over his fake dead body. That's his plan. Yes, it is. Um, double meanings, double jeopardy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then he... we Now, we haven't seen him for a bit, but all of a sudden we see him present the suitcase again, very notably at Goliath, so that he takes a look at it. Well, a flare gun sticks very suggestively out of the front of his morning <laughs> plot. Um, <laughs> we want to bring it up. He's like, in this particular scene, it, it looks even more suggestive than in the previous one. Mm-hmm. Look, um, Dad, it's my first boner. <laughs> it's a goal. And I, I got it to you, to the thought of dominating you. Oh. So Goliath just straight out tackles him. Mm -hmm. um, no hesitation. And the suitcase is knocked away. Then they fight over the stun gun, and it goes off by accident, quote unquote, lighting the place on fire. How many oil rigs have blown up so far in this show? Uh, what other one has blown up? In the pack episode, they sold an oil. Rig? Wasn't it an oil rig? It was rig? like a big boat with like I think, warehouse stuff. I feel like it was the same place as in this episode. Maybe. I'd have to double check. <laughs> Anyways, so the boat rushes away with the humans, and then they come to a stop at a reasonable distance. Meanwhile, Goliath gets up and sees Thalog rushing after the money. Thalog, come with me. The waters are only chance. Thalog responds, "Not without my money." <laughs> <laughs> There's no Mr. time. Crowd's energy. Uh, and a metal structure falls, and the resulting explosion knocks Goliath off the oil rig and into the water. So I just want to point out here. So he goes chasing after the suitcase. Sure, sure. But would Thalog have really put the money at risk by lighting the place on fire with a suitcase full of paper and currency? No. I think he's, he 
he's already stored, stashed it somewhere. Yeah, he, he stored the cash somewhere, and the briefcase at this point is empty. It could be. I mean, the fire was started by accident, too. But he was planning on starting the fire. Yeah, no, he definitely... And also, I'm not sure that it was on, on accident. I, he definitely, <laughs> like, intentionally shot the flare gun while yeah. they were fighting. Yeah, while they were doing I, I don't think dance. that was an accident. Yeah. He was planning on faking his own death. Yeah, Thalog's crafty. Like, he's actually smart. <laughs> yeah, I think the reason he was so prominently showing the suitcase repeatedly was to be, people remember, be like, there's cash in here, there's cash in here, there's cash in here. Yeah, like he was sending, like, visual support. Yeah, messages. and Xanatos does a lot of the same shit a lot yes. of the time. He's like, look at this. He's like the stage magician. Like, exactly. Like, I on this mm. while I am doing something else. Mm. Exactly. And he kept pushing everyone's vision onto it. So I'm like, the cash is definitely not in it. Because yeah. he's doing that. You're probably right. That makes yeah. sense. Anyways, so Elisa sees the explosions and she puts her head in her hands. Goliath. She does a lot of emotion to that to that one word. It's really good. And Zenatos just pats, just puts his hand on her shoulder and says, "What can I say, detective?" Except I'm sorry I turned your brother into a furry and currently holding him at my castle. But then I wrote that down, not realizing the cage was in was out of order. So. <laughs> But yeah, no, Xanatos, there's a lot you could fucking say, motherfucker. Uh-huh, but like, he's trying to move in on her. Like, the second Goliath's dead, he's like, because he's always, Xanatos has always sort of had a thing for Elisa, too. Like, he sort of wants to fuck her a little bit. Yeah, she's like over it. Uh, yeah, because, like, because immediately Elisa's like, you can say fucking nothing. Yeah, because <laughs> they, Cause they oh, see God, Goliath God. come out of the water. <laughs> So it's so good. So Elisa pulls him out of the water, and Xanatos just walks over to the convenient box they have on deck on the ship and pulls out a towel. It takes like the smallest towel the smallest possible. The smallest towel possible. <laughs> the life looks beautiful as he gets out of the water. Yeah, by his, the way. we he's get like a shot droplets. of like his legs and uh -huh. his butt, yes, and he's, he's just all wet. Shot. Like I'm gonna have to share that gift later. I know I have it. And Xenatos is like, I will personally try you, Goliath. <laughs> and Goliath's like, No, you won't. Like, get away from me. Oh my god. Well, and Xanatos is just like, Well, I should have known no copy could live up to the original. And Goliath, at this point, like, up till now, he's letting Xanatos approach him, but now he gets up super angry and just uh -huh. rejects the towel. That copy was a living being, and we all failed him. Yeah. Such a good line. And I love Delia's journey from, like, not accepting Thalog to accepting him as a person, but also Thalog being evil is, like, it's really good. And it's complicated. Yeah. And it's messy. It's yeah. good shit. I love it. Good shit. And then if Savaris just chimes in and all sing songy, We have company! <laughs> and, um, so Broadway and Lexington, so is missing in Act 3, finally arrive on scene. Uh, just in time to do nothing. Yes! Um, and Broadway's just like, what did we miss? And it was just, let's say it's been a long night. Broadway, you know, just doesn't read the mood at all. I'm just like, we had a busy night too. Like, we, like, we learned a lot about Thalog. And was just like, so do we guys. So did we. So do we. We learned that he's into electroplay, he's into domination submission, he's into bondage, he's into tranquilizer. <laughs> They learned a whole lot of shit. He's, he likes to like come across as a sugar daddy who don't need no man. Mm-hmm. So we ca then we ca go up to the burning oil rig to stare at it and the supposedly dead Thalog. Uh, and then it finally cuts away. And we cut back in the next day, presumably, to Castle Wyvern. We cut up to the one of the rooftops where Xanatos is sitting at... This Alice in Wonderland-esque <laughs> table. Having like a little tea party. Having a tea party. <laughs> this game of Mad Hatter and Munch Hair vibes. Um, it is the most like fancy, out of place looking thing uh -huh. I've ever seen. And like his legs are crossed, and it's just very funny, like the furniture, but it's still in like this medieval <laughs> castle. So it doesn't match. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very funny. funny. Just like just looking at it. They're just having their daily tea and scones. Mm -hmm. And Owen actually sits down at the table with him. They're having yeah. tea together. Yes. Ooh. I'm sorry, Fox, we can't fuck. I have to have tea time with Owen. Uh -huh. <laughs> you thought I had this boy time. Owen's just like, it's unfortunate you couldn't prevent all that ransom money from running up, sir. The 20 million would just about cover the installation of a more secure computer system for the corporation. Um, and Owen just hands him an estimate of the work, which is funny enough. <laughs> I just happened to have this prepared to match my snarkiness. 
Jesus. <laughs> um, so then he goes to sit down at the table, as he mentioned, uh, while Xander's is just like, what makes you so sure that the 20 million went up in smoke? Owen looks up from eating for a moment. He's like, sir? And Xander stands up and puts his little teacup down. Uh, Owen just keeps eating and doesn't even look at Santa Toast. During this. I'll let him monologue. <laughs> this is his moment. It didn't occur to me until just now, but if I had been in Thalog's shoes, I would have had a contingency plan for escaping the oil rig. I would have known that faking my own death was the optimum means of escaping scot-free with all those millions. Xander just walks over to the edge to look out. Owen, who just adjusts his glasses, You mean that creature's still out there? It has the money. It's as powerful as Goliath, and it's smarter than you. You know, the only person who can say that and get away Owen, with it. Yeah. He's got to add a little sass to the tea. Yeah. Like, as a treat. Like, 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 you done fucked up. He doesn't say he's as smart as you. He says no, he's smarter. smarter than you. Yeah. Because the Lord has outsmarted him. He right did. Now, That's so. undeniable. Until and they even out the score, he is officially smarter. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. No one else, anyone else in San would deny it, but oh, he just lets Owen say it. And San just replies, Owen, I think I've created a monster. And then Thalong appears, ha- like, as a bust over the left half of the screen, half faded in, oh and starts laughing so maniacally. <laughs> I'm gonna do an edit with that scene later. You guys are gonna love it. I can't wait. Yeah, you know what's coming. I can't wait. Alright. Yeah. So, while I was researching, you gotta start with research track number one. Alright. Lay it on us. Uh, Anton Severus has been followed up in real life. By the man Severino Antinori. Followed up? <laughs> you will find out in a moment. Like someone has an in- in cloning? Yes, who was charged in 2014 for kidnapping women as part of cloning experiments and stealing eggs. Wait, is this so, like a real person? Yes. Yeah. Named Severino Antinori. <laughs> that. <laughs> uh... So, like, I want to wow. laugh, but also that's such a horrifying <laughs> thing. Uh... I, I was just like, I can't. Means- Savarius just as creepy as he makes himself out to be. Uh-huh. Oh my god, this is not a copycat crime that we want to be seeing. Yeah. No. Um, yes, a noticeable, notable geneticist in gynecology. And freak. And freak, yes. Alright, alright. So, I know you also wanted to bring this up, but where did Thalog originally come from? Where did the concept? Because um, I have a whole bunch of inf- notes I on that. believe, from what I remember hearing, in the mixing room, they um, accidentally played, or I don't know if it was an accident, but they were listening to one of the lines of, of someone saying Goliath, and they heard it backwards, and it uh, sounded like Thalog. So, yes, yeah, so when they were mixing the 35mm movie version of the pilot, oh, that's okay. when this happened, of all places. a while ago. Uh-huh. There was one scene that they were just having a lot of trouble with, and the guys at Disney Sound kept rewinding it over and over again. Okay, okay. Um, and they actually listened to it rewind, okay. Because it's it was on 35mm. Uh-huh. And uh, eventually, Greg realized that it was Elisa saying Goliath backwards. But he just liked the sound of it so much that it gave him the idea of creating an okay. evil Goliath. Um... Like, Th- that's so cool from an editor's perspective that just that little instance uh-huh. led to birthing an entire villain. It's like Dracula and Alucard. Yeah! It's- <laughs> but yes, the, the other part it's of exactly it up. was, of course, uh, Keith David's incredible range not being used mm-hmm. as Goliath. Let him be evil. Yeah. Let, let him cook. I mean, I, I also do put in a factor, since you brought up the Enter Macbeth laugh he did, um, maybe uh, that could have also been a contribution to Thalog's uh, Quite birth possibly. in the writing room, just mm-hmm. because they thought Keith David sounded so cool as an evil laughy kind of guy. Um, so in terms of his color scheme, which you love so much, um, the origin of that was inspired by John Byrd's tenure on the Fantastic Four. Okay. Because. Um, Greg had been reading a bunch of issues where the Fantastic Four went to the negative zone, uh-huh. and when they emerged, their uniforms were altered from black and light blue to white and dark blue. Um, and like when he saw that, he's like, "That's what I want to do for Thalog." Sure. <laughs> Interesting. Um, you never know what's going to influence what. Yeah, you yeah know? that's very I'm that's cool. cool. Um, oh, oh, this one I have to read out. This was another ongoing point of behind-the-scenes contention. Since Thalog appears to be Goliath's evil twin, K. 
Carrie and the others thought we should play them as brothers instead of father and son. Nope. But that just seems wrong to me. Yep. <laughs> that wasn't the relationship either genetically or otherwise. I like the notion of Thalog having three fathers that he was in constant conflict slash competition with. As always, he makes the correct choice, which yes. is the more queer choice. Yes! Appar yes. Uh, apparently everyone else in the writing room was like, they should be brothers. And he's like, no. And just, like, overruled that. Evil, an evil brother be like a so soap opera. I'm yes. glad Greg overruled that. He always makes the right decisions. And it's, it's so much more complicated yes. if it's father and son. Yes. Yeah, like, it, it adds complexity. Um, because you see, like, all the clone stories all the time. Like, oh, it's my evil twin clone from another universe. It's like, no, we want to um, make it more um, complex and intense. Like, you know, this clone is grown of Goliath, technically, not necessarily making Goliath sibling-related in the sense, because he spawned from Goliath, he spawned from his blood, so, mm -hmm. you know, blood. blood, I love, like, something about Thalog gives me very, like, demon vampire vibes, just the way he looks, yeah. too, I love it, because yeah. he's got those sharp teeth, yeah. he's got the red <laughs> eyes, like, I could see him biting someone, oh my god, and feasting mm -hmm. on their blood, this fuels the Sid, it does, yeah, He's, um, he's the only vampire I'd be attracted to. <laughs> they lied. I didn't know you were a big daddy. Yeah, normally vampires don't do anything yeah, for me. Like, not agreed. in that way. I'm, into, um, I'm, I'm more into werewolves. That's my... I can't think of a single vampire. I do like Alucard, but just because he's an entire gender in himself. I mean, I love Alucard. I just don't want to fuck Alucard. I want to be Alucard. Yeah, it's very cool. He's I love so his pretty, outfits. So gender non-conforming. I love kind of. his collection of weaponry and powers. The fact that like he can in turn the into anime, a bat. He, he can had turn a into a mist. fight scene where his g-string was sticking out. Yeah, you bow. Yeah, that. That's a good And he's also show. canonically bisexual. He is canonically bisexual. Mm. Let's make let's do an Alucard episode. I fucking love <laughs> Alucard. Yeah, he's great. And uh, yeah, one day I'll sit down and watch the entire series start to finish. I need to watch the new season because it's about Richter now, and I love I love Richter. Um, did you have anything else? Tell no, pretty much all the other notes I brought up during the actual episode. Okay. Um. Um. Well, I can just. Include what I had. Um, so what I see is like we kind of segued all the season one angst pertaining to Coldstone, another customized gargoyle Xanatos put together, and since that didn't really fall through on the um, on the scary mutation level side of things, that kind of transferred into Thalog, who let's all agree is much more scarier, much more complex, and much more intimidating than Coldstone could ever yeah, be. Yeah, like every way that Coldstone falls so Falls short, like Thalog excels. Yeah. Like Thalog is, yeah. Thalog I agree. Like is the same sort of idea, wanted. but so much better realized. Yeah. yeah, like Coldstone is like a like a oh well maybe he has a chance at redemption. Thalog is like no motherfuckers. Fuck you. I don't want it. Um, I also loved getting to detail the first part of the episode with all the spooky build-up to Thalog to the reveal and how fascinating it is to introduce such an interestingly cold-blooded villain. Um, but yeah, that's really all the, um, the closure notes I had. Um, I can just, So, uh, well, I think it's time for us to discuss then what is the, uh, hottest moment. So, it has to be when Goliath is, like, chloroed by Thalog, essentially. I, I have the feeling you were going to say that. I, have, I love <laughs> how it depicts the helplessness and struggle of Goliath, who's suddenly been betrayed by his feelings yet again, and how vicious and domineering Thalog is with him. Um, of course, anything with Goliath in chains is an alternative choice, being weak and subdued. Thalog putting the flare gun in his cock sleeve is also <laughs> up there for me. Um, that's why I kept bringing it up. Thalog grabbing Lexington's feet at the start of the episode. He did grab Lexington's feet! Yeah. Or his uh, ankle, he was like, Give me that foot, boy! It was like... And then seeing Broadway's <gasps> He's ass. He's me! Oh! Seeing Thalog in a tube, etc. But yeah, my favorite is just, like, Goliath getting knocked this, out. This is, a, always... this is a good sexy episode. Yeah, this episode's hard because it keeps a consistent level of sexiness very strongly through almost the entire runtime. Yeah. Uh, they walk bringing sexy back. Yeah, it's it's good. Um, for me, I just I just had Goliath in chains. I had Thalite in chains. Both of them in chains. I'll also point out, this is something that happened in the episode that we didn't talk about when it happened, but when Goliath and Thalite were, like, wrestling, it sort of almost looked like they were kissing at the top of the time. Yeah, so I'm just like, gonna put that out there, it, too. 
a lot of Goliath's like a frame or two. hand-to-hand combat moments are kind of something of a dance in themselves. Like, they're choreographed, they uh-huh. have, like, movements, yeah, and, like... And they did they do the aggressive hand-holding in this episode, too? Yeah, but it's, too? like, much more, like... I don't know what it is. Like, they're both trying to, like, outwit the other combatively mm. in the way that each of them think, and it gets them to that standstill to where they're both fighting over the flare gun. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not necessarily, like, Wolf and Goliath, where Goliath can easily just, like, play into Wolf's contrived masculinity uh-huh. and outsmart him. Um, because Wolf's a fucking idiot, and Thalog is a genius. Yeah, like, if anything, like... That's like the 11th Wolf mention, I think. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I haven't been keeping count. But, like, yeah, Delioth can't outsmart Thalog, so he has to, like, out-heart Thalog instead. Mm. If I was into electroplay, the moment of Goliath getting electrocuted... That was a good one. ...would probably be the top. That, like, he looks so hot during that. Uh-huh. But also, I'm not super into electroplay. <laughs> I mean, me either. If it was electro paddles, that might be something. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so, I, after thinking about it, I'm gonna go back to my other one that I'd written down, which is the moment that he's just getting pulled out of the water by Elisa, and he's just dripping wet, like yeah. literally dripping wet. It's like it looks Fabio. So oh my god. Every time Delight's the wet muscles. in this show, he looks really fucking he looks good. So good. Oh he should be wet gosh. all the time. Yes, he looks like. So, like, Herculean, mm-hmm. almost like Conan. So, yeah, so I'm going to pick that one. Um, but I think we've established by now that there's so many hot moments in this episode that the chances of any of us agreeing was, like, almost nothing. I mean, I think if, if we had to pick one, it would probably be Sid, with, which with the ventilator. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. Was I love seeing, like, like, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> Thalog, Chloro, Goliath, and he's just like, hey, Dad, it's about time we have the talk. Now, how's this smell? <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh my and god. And knowing that that's a gas specifically made to make Gargoyles weak and helpless. Yeah, I, I like, keep going back to that. I, I think that concept. It's like a kryptonite now that we can use for Gargoyles whenever we want to. Yeah. So I appreciate that, fan that it exists. Writers, but I don't think the actual show ever brings it up. Yeah, on. but you know, fanfic writers, we pick up the slack. We do. <sighs> um, Alright, so. What think... would what would we rate the episode? Oh yeah, we, we should do that before we do the gayest character, huh? Okay, Let's so do it. my rating of the episode, I love this episode. I love the spooky atmosphere. I love all the facial expressions, and I think it is a fantastic introduction to Thalog. Um, though whenever Elisa looks scared, it's very jarring because she also is the most sensical in all the situations and was always able to save the day mostly on her own. Mm. A lot of expositions happen within the first five minutes of the episode and it took a lot of time and effort to like notate everything that happens properly, but I think the delivery worked for the most part. I'm tempted to give somewhere around like five out of five just because I love Thalog. Somewhere around. <laughs> somewhere around. I originally was gonna 4. have four point five, 5. but 9. like I kind of erased that. I'm like, no, I fucking love uh, no, this episode. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I am also planning on giving it a five out of five. Wow. Uh, from the start, it's uh, like you can tell. One of the things I forgot to mention that's actually in my notes right here is this episode went over over, over five sets of revisions and drafts mm. to get to this point. Mm. Like, I think it could have gone through like one more pass to be absolutely perfect because there are a few little leftovers that are stuck from previous drafts that weren't removed mm-hmm. yet. But regardless, it's it's pretty damn near perfect yeah, like as a Gargoyles episode. Other episodes we've looked at that have had that many drafts, like, it seems like there's parts that worked against each other, but in this part, in this episode, it didn't really feel like that for like, me. Like, it felt cohesive. I think I think the biggest thing that was left over was the power plant thing didn't get addressed. Oh. <laughs> and, like... Whatever happened to I that mean, power plant? And, like... Broadway kind of just vanishes from the episode because apparently in each subsequent revision he got less and less parts. Aww. But well, it's not really a Broadway wow. episode. I know, but like, the, it just he, there wasn't even like I, a little bit of an acknowledgement as to where he went or what happened with the power plant or anything. And there were a couple little things that could be tightened up, but I'm still giving it a five out of five. It's it's excellent. I also thought this episode was very very good. I I gave it a four out of five, but that doesn't mean I don't think it's extremely good. Uh, Thalon's character alone, like any episode Thalon is in, I always really liked. I yeah. think he's really fucking good. Um, I might boost mine up to like a four point five. I don't know. Like it's usually like I don't usually think of this episode as like gargoyles at its height, but it is really good. So yeah, we all agree that it's. 
Yeah, I love that episode. I, I and it's also come... a really gay episode, yeah. too. That I... <laughs> yeah, I didn't come into this one expecting to give it a 5 out of 5. I was expecting a 4 out of 5. No, but then I watched it, I'm like, I have the most nitpicky things. Uh, the only things I can say negative about this yeah, episode. Yeah, like, like, it's what just... Am I, why am I not episode. giving it a 5 All out of 5? All in all, a pretty solid episode, and they handle Thalog's character introduction very well. Uh -huh. And just, like, from a meta level like this episode is very easy to review which probably also yeah. made me like it more going through this process i was like oh this like there is like a lot of like exposition but it's delivered like in a way that was easy for me to write down yes. so i was like i appreciate that at least <laughs> uh okay who is gay um so well, this one for me is kind of up in the air oh so, Thalog is the obvious contender with his theatrical flair being able to chain up all three of his fathers alongside uh -huh. Elisa. Much like Goliath, he strikes me as very, like, bi-coded. He's got, like, a kink for just being powerful, much like Xanatos. Uh-huh. Um, I also do think Savarius doing everything he did because he thought Xanatos <laughs> wanted him to. Um, so, Savarius seeing Xanatos as his, like, senpai, rich boy, billionaire <laughs> business partner who he aims to please, I thought was funny. There's also Xanatos' undying love for Goliath that he's willing to make a literal love child clone of him and grow his own Goliath. We haven't even talked about that. Yeah, uh, like, just the the very creation of Thalog is extremely gay. Yes. Because Xanatos wants to fuck Goliath, and he wants his own Goliath to fuck. I just... Like... We keep getting closer to, like, <laughs> just the realization that every villain in this show just wants to fuck Goliath. That is the thing they have in common. Yeah... Halcyon Renard? He wants to fuck Goliath. I mean, I'm not saying Xanatos practically stole Goliath's seed to make babies, but that's pretty close he to the truth. Did like yeah, in a in a manner of speaking. So I do have to throw out that Thalog literally got um, his father's business partner to spend fifty thousand dollars of his father's money to kidnap himself <laughs> and put himself in bondage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty gay. Like he's not ashamed of it. Like, he's living his best life out here. Yeah. Like I, I, I as insane as it is, I have to give it to say like <laughs> just because like the sheer audacity of his gayness in this episode is off the charts. I can he yeah. is the fusion of a bisexual of two bisexual men. Yeah. He is bisexuality like times two. He's double, yeah. double jeopardy. Yeah. He's <laughs> He's he, half meta. You said He's, you don't like the title, but you've referenced it like two or three times. Because it's about stupid. It. But it's a good title, I think. I like it. I don't care. I'm just I mean, okay, it. like it's it works in the same way. Like, like Thalog himself. Is a double jeopardy. Should also not work. Like, he's an evil clone of Goliath. That is, like, a stupid idea. Yeah. But it's realized so effectively that I love everything about him. Yeah. And, the, and because they make him as fucked up as they possibly can. And that elevates him above, like, the, the, the almost juvenile. Like, he's an evil clone. Mm -hmm. But, like, he's such an interesting character. Mm -hmm. That, like, I love it. I fucking love it. Gargoyle's I love Thalog. Of interesting characters. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, uh, for me, it was it's a toss up between Thalog and Xanatos. Like, they're both really gay. I'll give it to Thalog because yeah. he's in fewer episodes, and we've given it to Xanatos before. Thalog wins out. He Thalog's is gay. Thalog's introduction is so powerful that he just went and won the gayest character. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and plus, he has a kink for, like, dominating his dads, which is. There's, there's something. There's something there. He has a, he he wants to fuck dads. I forgot to. He has um, a daddy thing. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we got some emails. Nice. Three what? emails. Um, oh really? Mm -hmm. No, I uh, I sent another That's boop out so like cool. before we recorded this morning, and someone was able to get it in. Nice. Um, so Aqua's email is first. So his email. Hello, I have a question for you all. How does it feel that you're about to get treated with two sexy episodes for this, for <laughs> Goliath and Thalog, and the next being all about Wolf's gay werewolf transformation? Hey, how does that feel, Sid? How does it feel, knowing knowing that Wolf is up next? I am not prepared to break down Upgrade, but I know that my notes are going to be hella extensive, and I'm going to have to get started, like, right now. Oh my god. Okay. If I'm going to want to disclose 
all my information. It's a very pivotal and plot heavy about episode. To have a ten hour episode? For all the probably pack who we'll be seeing again since season two, episode one. I'm going to delve into a lot of Wolf's body dysmorphia, a lot of his um, homosexual tendencies, as always, a lot of his, just a lot of who he is on top of, like, a lot of how conditioned he is to just go with whatever's going in his environment. He's always just been that kind of psychologically disillusioned juvenile criminal guy that just goes with whatever his buddies go with. Mm. He's like a masking himself into the scene kind of, but he's also just so upset. Yeah, um, going to be delving a lot into psycho cybernetics. Um, that book I've mentioned in my blog posts, my Wolf blog posts that you can read on Sid Scripps at Blogspot, um, where it talks a lot about visual images, how people who get plastic surgery can change themselves and not feel any better on the inside oh. because of the psychological conditioning they've put their mm. body image and through. And I do feel like that's wolf, like 100%. Yes! Yeah. Yes! Oh my god, I just love my queer problem child so much, and I'm going to try my best to do him all the justice next okay, episode. So, Aqua, Aqua, you brought up Wolf and you made Sid, like, rant for, like, five minutes. I, I, <laughs> yeah, um, this is Remy. Okay, so, he starts us off. Hello, Loincloth Hour crew. Thanks again for another great episode of your podcast. You never fail to make even the worst episodes fun with your commentary and opinions. This one was definitely a hoot, and I laughed out loud a few times. Also, did y'all just reference Common Rider? Yes, the answer we did. is yes, I've been yes. forcing them to I have been forcing them to watch *Common Rider* for the past couple of years. Yeah, so I am. I am the okay. giant *Common Rider* fan no here. Forcing, involved, okay, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love everything you've showed me. I love O's. I love Gaim so far. Um, looking forward to how Gaim's going to unfold. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to resume with Remy's email. Yes. And to add a couple things to the info for the episode. Jackson Jack Dane was Mace's stepson, not his actual son. Oh, so Mace is gay. Oh, okay. This is Mace random. didn't sire any children. I think I he's knew still, that it was He's still stepson, a full day. But I just probably heard someone say son and went along with it. But he did hear us refer to him as son in the podcast, which he wanted to just correct that it's his stepson, not his actual son. Turns out Jack was indeed in witness protection, wasn't faking at all. He was put in witness protection for testifying against the Dracons. Oh. He was born in 1919, which considering the episode takes place in late 1995 would mean Jack is about 76 years old. So it's impressive he stays so active and in relatively good shape for a man his age. That just makes me want him more. <laughs> yeah. He was alive. Spicy, just <laughs> aged daddy. Like, yes. He, he looks, he actually looks sort of incredible for being uh, that uh, age. Also, it's Weissman gorgeous. confirmed that Mace did indeed die trying to find his way out of the hotel. It Shocker. Was dehydration that did him in. He also confirmed that Mace was pretty high in the Illuminati Ecleons at the time of his death. Oh, I thought he was going to say he was just pretty high. He was high on crack. <laughs> yeah, I could see Mace Malone smoking some crack. I mean, if you know you're going to die. When he grabbed that rifle, like I'm like, okay, this, this is some crackhead energy crackhead. right here. So, yeah, like someplace in the high 20s. I think it's also interesting that Blandstone got inducted into the society into in a way to fill the empty space left by Mace, thus keeping the specific mm -hmm. number of members the same. Besides, Blandstone now can't try to divulge about their existence to the general public since I'm sure they have ways to suppress the information or could just outright kill him. So does Matt being in the Illuminati ever come up again? Yes. In the comics, yes. God damn it. I was still really holding on to my hacker isn't real theory. In, in the SLG comics, it comes up. Damn it. Okay. Yeah. Um... um. But that's enough about Revelations, he continues. As we now move on to Double Jeopardy, definitely an improvement. Even if they didn't do a good job of trying to keep the mystery of Thalog, it was all rather obvious from the start. I liked that it was obvious. That's just me. Like, yeah, what's the point? We always see through it. Every time we see a silhouette, we know who it is. That doesn't stop the episode from being entertaining, from the investigation on what's going on to all the subterfuge, the reveal, and the aftermath. 
plus the last act set in an abandoned oil rig. Such a great location. It was cool to see Xanatos showing anger, worry, how defeated he feels at the end of the episode. Like, his first actual genuine defeat, giving Xanatos some more depth as a character. Thalog makes for an interesting villain in his debut. I'm generally not a fan of him, but I can appreciate the concept of an evil clone of Goliath. Huh. So I don't know if any of us here can relate to that, Remy, but I appreciate your <laughs> input regardless. Other bits You're allowed to have differing opinions. Yeah, absolutely. Other bits that got my attention was the mentioning of Amir from a future episode and finding it funny how Elisa was driving so fast in the rain, especially in the specific kind of road, like, damn, that's either bulbous or reckless or maybe both. I Definitely did, both. I did also acknowledge that. When yes. I first saw her driving, I just got flashbacks to Matt driving. Yes! And I was like, okay. It's like I said, I think that I just, just, some of the footage I just everyone just drives like this on this road. Like, they're uh, crazy. Did they reuse footage or something? Like, what maybe. is... Maybe. I, I don't know. It oh. does, it, no, it's new footage. She's okay. just that... Maybe. But when she drives, I believe that she's still staying safe. It's like when Matt drives. twice in the same episode that she's almost gotten run off that cliff. <laughs> They're dangerous places. Yeah. Um, Don't go there. Now moving on to the timeline, and it's a doozy on this one. This episode starts after midnight, November 28th, just three days after the events of Revelations ended. And on this same day, Xanatos' security team was in Scotland, specifically at Loch Ness, searching for a certain something, which we will see the results of in a future episode, as you know. That's during the world tour, I believe. Yes. Uh, it was precisely at 2 a.m. on the 29th when Xanatos met Severius at the oil rig, and the rest of the episode unfolded, but it's fun of... It's fun how the events of the episode started over a year earlier, which, with the episode itself providing us with some specific dates, on November 15th of 1994, when the Steel Clan Ba attacks Goliath, this being just two days after the events of Temptation, and Severius begins the cloning process on December 31st. By January 4th, during the events of Enter Macbeth, the cloning process is successful, as Xanatos goes to inspect right after his release from prison. Thalog has reached adolescence by May 13th, and his programming by Xanatos is taking place by August 8th. Um, Thalog is fully grown and starts living at the castle by November 1st, the same day Xanatos receives the letter he sent himself from his time travel adventure from Vows, and it's during the wedding that Thalog, hidden so Goliath won't find out about him, starts to plan to steal the 20 million from Xanatos. Thalog first learns about Demona during November 10th, during the events of City of Stone, and he sees her chanting the spell on the TV, which means he remains fully frozen in stone sleep until Demona's spell is broken. And from then, he just bides his time until the events of Double Jeopardy. It's interesting how Thalog had been there for some unseen good chunk of time, but that should be enough for now. Looking forward to this episode of the podcast, and then to the next one, because we get Upgrade and Wolf getting wolfier. Um, you guys take care and keep being oh. awesome. I've, so, ar I've already said what I need to wait, say. Wait, wait, so I have to, I just have to bring up, it's only been three weeks since City of Stone. How many episodes has it been? It's been a lot. Like, four or five. Yeah. Like, no, this November is absolutely insane in terms of the number yeah. of events that happened during it. Would you like me to do the last email? Yes. Give your voice a break. Yes. Thank, so this, you, Remy. Thank, yes, you, Remy. thank you, Remy. Thank you, Remy. Love you. Emails are always so packed. Yes. Packed with like the pack. Yeah, I I didn't realize like the pack. Yeah. I did not realize that Enter Macbeth took place the same day as all the other things that were happening on January four. Oh my god. This episode. So this last email is from Super Neko, or Super Neku, which I recognize that name. I know he's following me. I think he's following you yeah. as well, Sid. He's following the Loincloth <laughs> Hour in general. He's one of our newer fans. Mm -hmm. So it says, hello, fellow loinclothers. Firstly, I apologize that it's taken me so long to listen to your show. I binged through the whole thing a couple weeks ago, and honestly, I really love it. It's nice to hear from guys who not only share my love of gargoyles, but also thirsting over too many characters in the show to count. Right. My memory of Double Jeopardy is vague, other than Thalark's debut, although I'm certain I'll recount it once I listen to the LCH episode. Would you say Goliath Thalog counts as a daddy-son relationship or self-cessed? I say either way, we wouldn't complain. Winky, Winky face. face. <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, 
I, I consider it more father son. Yes, personally. definitely. Mm. I, I agree. <laughs> I think that was actually what we opened the episode with. So. Yeah. Um, Anyways, thank you for the hours of entertainment. Sending my love to all of you from Joel, aka Super Neku. Aww. Thank you, thank Joel. Thank you very much. I'm I'm really happy that we get some new fans once in a while. Oh, There's such yeah. a huge backlog for them to dive into. Yeah, me too. Because we've created quite the backlog. Oh yeah. Like I wonder. He said we binged through. I wonder how many hours that was by now. I, mean, <laughs> I, could... I have I have the SoundCloud playlist. Yeah, that like shows we could we time. could add it up. It's like no, it it's shows a lot. It. Bless you for listening yes. to our very long show. Yes. Yeah, so far I've got about like nearly three hours of material recorded here. Also, but obviously we're gonna cut. Gonna make a guess, but the world ends with you is awesome. If that's what your name is, because I oh wait is is Neku from that? Band? Neku's the main character from yes. Twelve. I am a giant Tory fan, so I'm going to hope that his name is right. Well, this is super Neku. Mm. So he's better than regular Neku. Indeed. All right, so time for us to say goodnight. Yes. We've yes, been recording is. for a long time. We're good. Yeah, no, I've got pit stains. He's got pit stains. We're all pretty like ramped up from talking it's about Thalog. Three hours. Yes. You can find me. I'm Manicorn at uh, Patreon. I'm Manicorn at Blue Sky. I'm Spankicorn on Twitter. I'm Croup on Fur Affinity. I'm Manicorn on Archive of Our Own. And you can find me in all those places when I write sexy stories. Uh, I'm. Pangolin here on, on Blue Sky, Twitter, even if I never go on it anymore, uh, and AO3, and I'm once 3333 three, three, three on Fur Affinity. Um, I'm Sid Scripps on Twitter, Tumblr, Blue Sky, um, probably other mediums I can't think of. Archive of Our Own, I, I created one recently. Oh. Uh, we'll see if I ever post material there. Um, you can find me... Uh, you should just subscribe to the Loincloth Hour YouTube channel for most Hell, of my yes. video editing content pertaining to gargoyles and this podcast. Um, you can follow me on Fur Affinity at Alistair Alderman if you uh, have no sanity. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, and speaking of the Loincloth Hour... The Lone Cloth Hour is also on Twitter, on Blue Sky, YouTube, and Patreon. And, Patreon, and SoundCloud. And SoundCloud. So you should follow us in all those places in case any of those platforms just disappear one day. They definitely know about one of those platforms because I don't know how they would be listening to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but so we you should don't follow know which me on, one. us on all of yeah. them. <laughs> Just in case. If you want oh, if you want to listen to episodes without the background music or sound effects, I am uploading files to our Patreon for alternative variants, so that way uh, patrons can just download the episodes directly and just get our base audio. As well as, um, I think we're probably going to start posting our notes to the Patreon yeah. as well. Yes. So we just need to actually collect them all. Oh yeah. So if you ever want like behind the loincloth hour, like beneath the loincloth, beneath the lo- just lift <laughs> that loincloth <laughs> up, see what's underneath. Yeah, there. like. That's what we should have called our Patreon, damn it. We can still change it. You're right. We'll do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you ever want to see Beneath the Loincloth, go to our Patreon, because uh, there's going to be stuff there, and you'll see sneak peeks at other projects I'm working on, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I think that's about all I have for plugs. I think so, too. We're all set here. We're tired. Mm. Um, ne- the next time you guys hear my voice on this podcast, I'm going to be a fucking mess. Do you, have any, do you have any thoughts on Wolf? Let's talk about Wolf. I'm going to end the episode right now. Otherwise, we're going to be here for another half hour. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Ciao. I love you all, but I love Wolf more. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs>